My name is Gregory Crafts, and I am your Dungeon Master this evening. Welcome to the first session of Secrets of the Barrow Maze. Secrets of the Barrow Maze is a uh, mega dungeon written by Dr. Greg Gillespie. Uh, and tonight uh, is our first session as I run this as a West Marches campaign with Mastermind Adventures. I am a Dungeon Master for Hire with Mastermind Adventures. You can book me to run games for you. If you enjoy uh, one shots, if you enjoy ongoing campaigns, if you enjoy D&D or Star Wars, Marvel superheroes, or uh, you know World of Darkness or any of the other systems out there, uh, I would be happy to run a table for you. Uh, I have my introductory adventure running right now in the month of March uh, called Jailbreak. Uh, that's running on Fridays at the moment. Uh, you can book me for that. You could book me for your own Barrow Maze session if you like what you see tonight. This is definitely for the hardcore, some of the more advanced folks. Uh, and, but I also have uh, sessions of a game called Burn Bright. Uh, that is Roll20's original RPG that I'm going to be offering uh, some sessions of very shortly. You definitely want to check that out. I'm rushing through all this right now, mostly because I want to get to the good stuff tonight. Tonight is about exploring, uh, starting the exploration of the Barrow Maze and the world contained within. Uh, and I would like to, for, to welcome to all of you our brave adventurers this evening that will be joining us. Uh, on uh, as we go through. So let me go on ahead and we're going to go around here and do the introductions. I'm going to start it with Brooke. Hello, my name is Brooke and I am going to be playing a human barbarian named Irina Shire. Irina Shire. Well, welcome Irina and Brooke. Glad to have you here tonight. Mr. Moore. Hey guys, I'm Brett, longtime friend of Greg's and I'm playing a, a uh, tiefling bard's time tonight. So this ought to be a lot of fun. His name is Carson. <laughs> I now, uh, what as a bard, what is your form of artistry, sir? What is your preferred artistry? Uh, loot and storytelling are kind of the two main ones. I mostly served as a distraction for a thieves' guild growing up. Oh man, I wanted to make you sing tonight. I was really <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, uh, boo. No, I like my boo. neighbors too. Who earns? But when you're moving anyway, you know. You you could you could definitely get them back for that because you're 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 leaving town or I'm leaving that area that part of town. All right, uh, Mr. Matt. Hello, I'm Matt playing a dragonborn rogue, and uh, honestly, it is my first ever Dungeons and Dragons game, so I'm kind of excited and uh, <laughs> nervous, but uh, this will be fun. So we are glad to have you here tonight, man. And this is uh, this is quite the this is gonna be quite the experience for you, I think. I hope you have fun with this. Uh, and like I said, no such thing as dumb questions. Feel free to ask anything that comes up. Uh, you know, this is meant to be uh, a fun time. And, uh, you know, we, we will, uh, I promise I'll just kill you slowly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. And last, uh, last in introductions, but first in our hearts tonight, uh, I am so excited to be playing with this man. Uh, he is the current DM for my, orig for, my, uh, for my original gaming group back in Boston, Mr. Mr. Blake. Nice to meet you, everybody. My name is Blake. Tonight I'll be doing Mold. He is a turtle, a turtle folk uh, fighter, uh, fisherman by trade, but occasionally fighter when the uh, when the need arrives. And looking forward to it. Awesome, brother. Awesome. So glad to have you here uh, tonight. I hope uh, you know Blake. Blake, I've uh, been uh, he's been helping me out with planning the. Uh, Brutes in the Shackled City, which is my Monday night, ongoing Monday night campaign. Uh, you can check us out here on Twitch or on Facebook or on YouTube or any of the other. If you're watching us now, you can watch uh, Brutes in the Shackled City, Monday nights at 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, Blake has DM'd that campaign before. He's been helping me out on the back end of things, uh, getting everything set up. And, uh, you know, and I've even uh, created an NPC in the campaign that is uh, his. Uh, that that is basically an avatar of him as a tribute. Tribute. So I'm very excited to be able Too to kind. include that. Oh, dude! No, like uh, this is. Uh, it's it's my pleasure and honor to uh, to to incorporate you into the campaign and immortalize you as uh, one of our uh, dock workers. So tonight's game, Barrow Maze. Uh, let me see. Why did everybody else's cameras? Oh, because I put that on the focus. Sorry about that. There we go. I'm still working on the interface here a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, tonight's game is the Barrow Maze. 300 plus room mega dungeon. This is literally years and years and years of content. 
we're not going to get terribly far into this, y'all, not going to lie. But uh, even still, uh, I have generated tonight's encounters randomly, completely randomly. I generated them ahead of time just for ease of uh, getting every, for ease and speed of play. And uh, I can tell you, it's going to be exciting. Uh, so we start the evening. We start the game in the town of Helix. Helix is a small village, uh, small even by village standards. Not terribly large here. You guys are all sitting at the early grave. This is the tavern, the inn uh, within the town. And you have all come in response to an ad on the job board. It's about lunchtime, and it's actually very slow uh, here. You guys are pretty much the only ones in the tavern. You're sitting here as a tall man, dashing gentleman, wearing very fine, very uh, refined uh, clothing without a spot on it, like flawless hair, perfectly coiffed, luscious beard, uh, stands in front of you. And he says, good, wonderful. This is exactly what I was hoping for. This is, this is, this is, this is spectacular. I cannot wait for this. You, you, thank you, you for all responding to my post on the board outside. I was afraid that no one would come, but you four, you four are here. Do you understand what this is? Do you understand what this is, friends? Yeah, it's money. That's what that is. I was going to say kismet, oh, faith. Okay. But money, Why wouldn't you just there say is money in this. That. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mold, friend, what was that? Mold kind of leaned forward, like, then why wouldn't you just say it instead of saying you were going to say it? I like you, friend. I like you very much. You are very forthright. I appreciate that. Uh, but yes, money, glory, fame, adventure. That is what we are all here for in this backwater town in the middle of nowhere. The only reason why this place exists is because it happens to be next to the greatest, most deadly field of battle ever to be known. I mean, this is simply a stopover. Uh, no, your, your levels are good. Uh, so friends, why do you, why do you, my lady adventure? Money, you said? I owe this guy a crap ton of money, pointing the, over to Sicarius. I uh, got we were playing some cards last night and uh, got a little too overzealous in my betting, and uh, yeah, I lost. I lost. Oh, I thought well. I was gonna win, but I real lost. I lost real hard. It sucks. Oh, well. Hopefully then, then not only will we find enough money and fame and fortune and glory that you can pay this debt off to your friend, but you could be set for life. I mean, you understand here that the, the barrel maze is a place of great forgotten treasures and ancient curses and the stuff of legend. Oh. You understand that? Yes, indeed. Oh. Uh, and Mr. Um, uh, the, the, the dragonborn with the, uh, with the swords who, who she owes the debt to. I'm sorry, friend, I did not catch your name. My name is Sicarius. Sicarius, Sicarius, and what what brings you here today into our into our fateful pod of kismet and 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 luck? What 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 makes you wish to go out on an adventure with me today? I'm not here for the adventure. I'm here to make sure I get my money. She assured me that there would be a lot of money to be had. That's the only reason I let her live and walk away from that poker table last night. Oh, oh dear. Oh well. Uh, then, yes, I, I understand. Uh, I, I'm starting to understand the depth of the situation here. So, <laughs> Ooh. My, my, my lady friend here, I forgive me, I did not catch your name. Irene Ashar. Irene Ashar, yes. Well, is that all one word or two? Two. Two. Uh, Irene Ashar, got it. Yes. No, 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 no. Irina Shire. Ah, I understand, fair, uh, fair lady Shire. Yes. Now I now thank you for clarifying that for me. Um, 
and uh, our tiefling sitting in the back, looking mysterious and quiet. Friend, why are you here? What brings you here? What drives you to join me today on this noble quest? You keep repeating it. You keep talking about the mystery and the legends of this place. I want to see what kind of adventures would dare enter it. And I want to see if we can, if they, well, I'm here, I'm, I'm mostly here to tell the tale. But I'm here to see if they can survive the challenge of the legendary I could make I could make this story last for years. I love it. I love it. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, you, and you are a storyteller, a raconteur by trade. Is that correct? I am, as a matter of fact, when I choose to be. Wonderful, wonderful, my friend. I shall commission you a tale of the noble deeds that we shall do this day. I shall, I shall, I, I, I shall have you sing it. I shall have you sing it at, 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 at the great revel and celebration that we are going to have once we conquer this, this cesspool of evil. I'm and not much finally, singer, but I'll be happy to spin the tale. Wonderful, wonderful. And then, lastly, my, uh, my, my turtle friend. I did not catch your name. Mold. 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 I like that. Mold. You are very straightforward, sir. So I hope you will answer me straightforwardly as I ask you this question. What burning passion inside you makes you wish to join us today? Nets. I need new <laughs> nets. And nets aren't cheap. Ah! Financial reasons. I, yes, no, I understand. I understand. I was like, I didn't know they had a cache of nets within the barrow maze. That's that's fascinating. Well, no. uh, you thought he was talking about a cache. I thought he was talking about a cashew. <laughs> about uh, nut. Nuts. Nuts. Well, nuts. <laughs> well then, friends. As, I, as you have saw on my advertisement, uh, my advertisement that was out on the job board out front, my name, my name, <laughs> I had I had him written down, and it's in the chat. So, and by the way, who of the great readers are you? Is it Eric? <laughs> yes, oh, yes, uh, my, my name is uh, is Lord Eric Great Reaver of the Mord, uh, Mordenkind and Great Reavers. And... I am seeking glory. My father has put me on a quest to go out and earn my title, to earn my stripes, to have stories told of the glory of my adventures so I might be worthy to assume the mantle of his rulership in his land. I've come from a very far off land in order to, to, uh, to, to prove my mettle so that I might be able to rule my homeland. And I require assistance, adventurers. I want to... I want to form a bond. I want to bond with each of you. I want us to know each other, uh, to trust each other intimately. I want us to function as a unit, like a wild animal. That you ever see a pack of animals hunt? Have, yes. you, ever seen, have you ever witnessed that? Wolves, for instance, wolves hunting. They don't function individually. Nay, they swarm their prey. They work together to bring it down. And I want us, the five of us, to go forth into the swamps, into the barrows, and conquer that demon-infested, uh, uh, stone, unnatural stone cairn of, of death and evil. Mm, so your first little romp around the world, you want to go, like, storm a swamp and, like, wreak all kinds of havoc? Uh, That's a big first step, buddy, but I'm down. Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact. Huh. Where was it you said you were from? Ah, uh, making me go back to my notes, Brett. You're making me go back. <laughs> I can't tell the story if I can't. I give copied the background. It. The one part I didn't copy paste. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm which grabbing. Which window? The which window? Which window? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm literally doing like 18 different windows right now. Where did it go? It's in the Discord. Okay. Of yeah, well, he's from he's from he's from northwest of here, very far to the north, very far to the west. You probably never heard of the place. Uh, you know, it is humble, like I am, so humble. But it is it is our home. 
and we are great. Uh, we are we are proud of it in our own way. Why, man? Discord is just like not opening right now. Uh anyhow, yes. But my homeland is of no consequence, friends. Uh, what is of consequence, though, is is that we get underway. I will need each of you to come fully equipped tomorrow morning. It is a half day's journey uh, to get to the Barrows. We will have approximately four hours from about the midday for, through through the midday before we must uh, depart again. For unfortunately, in the Barrows. Uh, it is not safe to be stuck there at night, from what I understand. I've spoken to many folks, including good Bolo here, as he points over to the mustachioed, bald-headed uh, uh, bartender. Bartender stands there in his apron and, uh, you know, commoner's clothes with the, uh, you know, with the customary rag in the mug. And he's just standing back there just watching all of this. It's very clear to you that he has seen this exact kind of situation happen before. Maybe not with all the flourish, but, you know, the delusions of grandeur, the dreams of glory. He's seen it all before. And he just kind of, like, doesn't even acknowledge the fact that he's been acknowledged. He just kind of is, like, with just this bemused but also kind of sad look on his face as he looks on at all of you. But sad? I was going to ask... Like how far away from like the this Mars area is Helix? I mean, are we like kind of uh, sitting on the water, or is it like a a hump Helix, to get there? Uh, Helix borders on, um, you know, be, being a creature of of the the Barrows, uh, the Barrow Moors. Uh, you know that Helix is actually a human settlement that is pretty much just off the off the uh, the Moors, but to get to the Barrows, where the Barrow Maze is. That's about, uh, I mean, because the, the Barrow Moors go uh, about 30 miles wide, 35 miles tall on the map. So very, very, very large stretch of swampland. Uh, the, you know that um, the Barrows, though, are about a four mile walk, but that's through the swamp. So it takes okay. a lot longer to get through. It takes a lot longer to navigate that. You could probably navigate it pretty conveniently being a natural amphibian, uh, but you know, especially, you know, normal humanoid folks struggle with it a lot more. So it takes basically double the time uh, for, for the average distance. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is that, uh, well, 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 let me, let, let me, let me just, let me just get to this in game. Uh, yes. Yes. Now, as I mentioned, I will need you all here promptly half an hour before sunrise. We will make uh, we will we will make leave at daybreak. We will not waste a moment. We will spend as long as we can out uh, down there conquering this God's forsaken place. And then we shall come back in glory and honor and make our way back home and we shall feast. But we will not be caught out in the barrows at night. From I have been told that is quite hazardous by a number of very intelligent people whom I trust implicitly. We do not wish to be stuck out there, so we must come back quickly. And now, uh, oh yes, yes. And as you see, there's a pair of barmaids that come out with uh, a round of steins. They carry five steins. They put down one in uh, in in front of uh, each of you. And. They say, yes, ah, I understand that it is a customary tradition here at the early grave inn when a group is about to go and embark on a great adventure that they are given a round together and they get to toast. And Bolo in the back says, it's usually their last drink. <clears throat> we'll see about that. Tink. Well, cheers, friends. Cheers. Let us all toast and be be friends and merry, and most importantly, every good adventure needs to have every good adventuring party needs to have a team name, a name that they can be known by, something for the stories, perhaps. 
And I, I don't know, just to think think about this here. Just I'm I'm just spitballing here. I've just been uh, thinking about a uh, couple of different options, but I really, really like the intrepid adventurers of legend. Morden Kynan's Marauders. Morden Morden Ka- Guards Marauders. Morden Guards, Guard. excuse me. Yeah, Morden Kynan's Guards Marauders. Guards, Marauders. Morden Guards Marauders of the yeah, as as and that I like that as I am of uh, Eric Great Reaver of the Morden Guard Great Reavers of course and Morden Guard is my 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 birthright the throne to Morden Guard shall be my birthright and this is where I prove to my father once and for all that I am worthy of his love and his uh and 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 his uh, oh, uh so to be able to success uh, to 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 succeed uh, succeed him. Oh, if he ever kicks off, that is. Oh. Now then. Ah, friends, what bi- uh, do you have any business or anything you wish to attend to before we embark on our journey tomorrow? Do you have anything you need? Uh, you, you understand that we are working for an equal share of the treasure. Uh, Mold just kind of looks... No, so go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering, do we have any money on us right now? I don't think I... Uh, you'll you'll have your you'll have your well you you, you, you have your character starting gold. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Do that. Brb. Brb. I'll figure it out. Don't wait on me. I'm in uh, debt, so I have no money. So. <laughs> well, I think I think I at this point you're starting gold. You, huh? you, you probably have a little bit of money left on you because he wouldn't have left you without being able to pay for room and board for a couple of that nights. But true, you basically true. just said, hey, if you come on this, if I'm going to go on this job, I'm going to make some money. I will pay you from that. You will have my share. So he's getting double the share for for your uh, for, for your survival. What's the weather like? Like, is it we feel like it's going to be chilly or, you know, it is early, early spring. Uh, so it's misty in the mornings. It's uh, rainy, and it's it's a damp region to begin with. So it's kind of it's kind of cold in the morning. It'll get warm during the day, and it'll get cold as hell again at night. And it's always always damp. Um, yeah. So that is that is a factor that you will be having to take into consideration as you go about this. Um, um, are we still yep. in the inn? For the moment, yes. The moment. All right. Well, I'll go up to Mr. Barrow and be like, hey, buddy, you been inside this uh, barrel maze before? Well, I was a, uh, well, I was an adventurer once. Oh, yeah. Well, can you give us any tips? Like, you know, am I going to be having to climb things? Am I going to have to swim? Am I going to have to like, you know, like I figure I'm about to kill some stuff, but. My, my tip for you. Don't go if you like all your limbs and you like living. Just don't go. You must tell me everything about your trip into the barrel maze. <laughs> everything. I want to know it all. There's not enough alcohol in the world for me to want to recall that. I've, I've spent 10 years trying to forget. Can we try? <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just, just kind of looks at you and he says, "You're you're a bard, aren't you? Just isn't there something you're trying to sleep with right now? Excitement, danger, epic uh, epic tales of glory and fortune. That that uh, I need uh, those to get into bed. I I will I will tell you this. This is the most unhallowed." the most dangerous place I have ever seen and experienced in my entire life. He points to the very, very well-worn sword and shield uh, over the bar. I wielded those proudly and with honor. And can down, down can we, we borrow them? No. Fine. Those are mine. I don't pick them up anymore, but those are still mine. And that that, and the memories are all that I have left of the rest of my party, my friends. They all died horrible, horrible deaths in that place. Mm. This is not for the faint of heart. And if you don't mind me saying so, the man who hired you is clearly a fool. 
Oh, yeah. But those oh, make yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, as long as you're aware of it, I can't tell you not to do something. You know, if that's if that's what you want to do. Hold on a sec. Hold on one second. Do you need help with that, babe? Oh, okay. <laughs> crash, 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 crash. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. no, it's all good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well. All right. Just just say that uh, you've you've been warned. All right. And, uh, that's that's all I can tell you. Every season, for the past, every season for as far as long as I can think back, and then some. Every season, when the when the great thaw happens, it becomes Barrow Maze season, and every jack wagon with a dream and a sword arm, thinking that they're going to be the next Rizdower, and comes out here trying to make a name for themselves or get rich, or you know, occasionally you get people who try to hide uh, to hide out here and never uh, never be found, and that's a good place to do that. <clears throat> let me tell you, but you don't know, say, yeah, but the walls of that hellhole, the Barrow Maze, are painted with the blood of idiots, morons, and the people who don't, people who couldn't figure out where the line between bravery and stupidity was. Sounds right up our alley. Sweet. Where All might right. be like the nearest like general store? Oh, you're looking Pick for supplies. Up. Well, yeah, you, you must be brand new here if you haven't had a chance to talk with uh, the folks over at the Silver Standard yet or uh, or Turgan. Billworth Turgan is the one you want to talk with. He runs the trade goods here. Uh, he's got all the basic equipment. You know, he's also, if, if you want to do a job that's not likely to kill you, he's always looking for guards for his trade caravans going over to Iron God Mott or to Bogtown. You know, so he pays he pays cash money, and it's good money. And if the if the 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 uh, he'll pay bonuses and incentives if the uh, if if the shipment makes it through unmolested. But where's the glory? Where's the romance? Where's the story? Friendo, you got to still be alive to tell the story. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Friendo. You don't have a story. Why be here at all? Hmm. Well, there's a reason why the motto above the door here, above the door here at the uh, the early grave is what it is. There's a reason for that. I'll let you guys figure it out. Why? What's, what's the motto? What's the motto? Hold on a second. I had it in the notes that I can't access right now. But we can pretend we know it. That's a good one. He, 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 he just smiles and nods and says, you know, go outside, take a look at it, think about it. Think about it really hard before you go off, especially with that guy, that ponce. Hmm. All right. So you, uh, you know, at this point he goes back and he sees other people coming in. There's a, there's a, there's a gentleman coming in with earrings and a, and a, and a pointed black beard and a cockeyed wizard cap coming in. He's like, don't see you coming in here very often, friend. How can I be of service? Yeah, yes. And they walk over and start chattering away about lunch and everything else. It's apparently quite unusual for the local wizard to come in and, uh, have anything here he normally keeps to himself apparently so that's uh kind of exciting intriguing yeah uh yeah oh mazas mazas uh let me introduce you to uh some of the uh some some of the fine adventurers that are about to go have their first delve into the barrel maze tomorrow oh oh this is wonderful well, I am I am Mazus the Magnificent, resident wizard here in the town of Helix. And uh, if you need, uh, if you happen to cross anything of a magical nature, be it scroll or item or even weapon, uh, I pay fair price for it. 
I'm always looking for interesting artifacts and other uh, other bits and baubles and bibbity bobbity boo. Please feel free to to bring anything that you find that uh, that glows in the dark or does other interesting things and bring 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 it to me and I'll be happy to uh, take it off your hands for a fair price. Oh, good to know. Do you sell magical goods? Nope, I do not sell magical goods. I uh, I do not sell. I buy. But I can provide assistance with uh, with with spell casting services if you need them. But my collections are my collections. You understand? I do not. Uh, I do not just merely give anything away. It's just you just have like a hidden treasure trove under your house or something. Not that I would admit to to anybody walking around well armed and in in, in uh, parties of multiple. So you do. You do. You. So what? I've heard what stories of golden lures that can like summon fish out of anywhere. Is that true? Or have people been pulling my finger? I don't think that's the phrase that you're looking for there, <laughs> sir. But um, I'm sure that a that 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 a uh, lure could be enchanted uh, to do such a to to accomplish such a feat. I'm I'm positive of it. That'd be quite that'd be quite the spectacular thing. To see, uh, please feel free to, to bring anything that you find that uh, that glows in the dark. Ah, I will. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> I always recommend you to other uh, mute, mute, if anybody's if anybody's opening the stream or watching it, go ahead and please mute the tabs just so we don't get that kind of uh, echo going. I'm checking all of my devices to make sure I didn't open something by accident. Oh. Um, and and Eric comes back and says, "Friends, friends, one more thing, one more thing." And he's like, he kind of, "Come in, come in, come in, come here, lean, lean in, lean in." Do any of you know the way to the barrel maze? I think the guy's gonna show us. What 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 guy? I I, I haven't. Ask your friend Bolo. Oh no, Bolo does not does not like me. We had a dis disagreement over my accommodations, and he he does not like me very much. Uh, I fear that he, that that he understands that he's providing subpar service to a man of noble blood such as myself. But you know, he, he's not interested in uh, in accommodating a man of, of nobility and wealth. So uh, he he has told me that under no circumstances would he provide any sort of assistance. But um, if if none of you know the way. I might have to hire a guide. Uh, so was this like we do a survival check on this to see if we could uh, like land nav it out? Uh, it would take it would take a number of survival checks, and actually, Mul, just because I'm uh, because you're kind of from the general area, you you have always been told to stay away from the barrows, and you right. know, you're you're like at a point now where at the ripe old age of 125 that you're like. Uh, you know that you're now coming into your own as as an adult, and that you can decide for things for yourself. So now, now therefore, it's time for you to go out into the world, and uh, you you know you think that you're ready for this, but you've never actually been there, and you know that because of the fog that encases the the barrows, it's very very easy to get lost. So if there is a guide, probably not a bad idea to to find somebody. So, um, but. Brooke, you said you wanted to go to the. Uh, you said you wanted to go check out the. Yeah, store. one of the stores. Okay. Yeah, Fantastic. maybe the Turgan Trading, maybe. Uh, Turgan's Trade Goods, absolutely. So you walk out of the tavern, located conveniently right here. You guys walk out of the tavern. Do you uh, do you take a glimpse at what is over the door? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, it says Itari Art Itari Itari Art Morere. That reads ominously. Is does it look like dwarvish by chance? Uh, out of game. It's Latin. Yeah. Um, in game, yeah, that does that does seem kind of uh, kind of uh, dwarvish. Does anybody here speak dwarven? Fantastic, you recognize it uh, as 
get rich or die trying. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a, I like that motto because yeah. that's, I'm, that I have no are. choice. Yep. Yeah, that is what you are here to do. That kind of motto. All right. Now let's go find things that maybe help me not die. That's always a good thing. Always very, very important. Or so, Brett, you had a thought? Nope. Saw the actual spelling was all. Oh, yeah. That, uh, uh, yeah, my, I, I didn't study Latin in Catholic school, oddly enough. Uh, so that, that, and when I originally put it through, uh, Google Translate, it gave me something a little different, and I can't get it to do the exact same thing again. So as everybody's kind of walking in the store, Mold will kind of speak out, um, you softer people may want to get something tight. If we're going through the swamp, leeches like to stick on things. Me and Sakaris probably going to be all right, but you guys a little squishy. What do you mean, like clangy clothing? Wouldn't it make more sense to wear like baggy stuff so it doesn't like get next to your skin? No, because if it's tight, when the leeches come up on you, there's no point that they can get on your skin. If you're wearing something loose, it's just going to get wet. It's going to hang down, and then the guys will just clamp on. They can Ooh. hang on to me for days and days, and he kind of taps his thick, thick, leathery hide. They're just going to starve. But you guys, you're like a walking chum bucket. <laughs> Definitely leave a walking chum bucket out of the story when I retell this later. Um, <laughs> or leave it in. Uh, there's no account. That depends on how tomorrow actually goes. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 All right. You know, do you know how to remove leeches? Yeah. And then he's, and you can see that like his nails are like long and like sharp. You just get them, you twist them, and they pop right off. Now, if they're fat enough, you put them in your pocket, and then you put them in your stew, and that way you don't really ever waste anything. And if they're skinny, then you just put them right on the hook, and you just cast them right back in the water, and you don't ever waste anything. Oh, that's so gross. All right. All right. We'll see if they have any of that sort of stuff in the store. That's real gross. I've, ugh, ugh. Uh, so curious, do we got to, we, we got this, this, that, that place that we got to go there? We got to go wherever you got to go to get some money. Because otherwise I'm taking it from you. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All Here's, right. I'm, yeah, now I'm, then, I'm, moving I'm, on. Uh, <laughs> Which is exactly what the leeches said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you, feeling you, like you, he's done his civic duty, Maul just kind of like fades back to the the back again. Absolutely. Well, moving on to uh, let me see. Here we go. Moving on to our destination now. You guys head over to the general store, which is actually not terribly far. It's actually practically right next door. It's located right over here on the map, as you can all see. Go wandering over. Really far. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it it's far if you're stumbling drunk, but considering the fact that it's midday, that's probably unlikely, except for maybe the bard. Uh, and you uh, you open the door to go and let yourself in to, to the store, and you hear a little bell ding, 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 ring over your head as you walk in. Ah, oh, good day. Good day. You individuals appear to be of the adventuring cut, or the adventuring type. I like the cut of that jib. Uh, how, 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 my name is Bill Worth Turgan. How can I be of assistance? What's up, dude? Uh, so we're about to go into this barrel maze place, and, uh, oh. you know, yeah, I know. I know. Mm. Um, and so I was wondering if you had, like, I don't know, any kind of, like, first aid kits or i mean if you really got some like special like you know healing potions and stuff you know what i'm saying i do not deal in the magical um uh but i do have some basic equipment that uh is available uh also between you and me 
uh, many adventurers don't understand the value of a very of, of a good solid sledgehammer. What to like that? Like this this thing won't won't work, and I'll like point to my glaive. Like that. That's uh, not, that won't tell, good sir. What is the value of a good solid sledgehammer? There is a well, story here. I am so glad you asked, son. I am so glad you asked. Uh, let me tell you, uh, the Barrow Maze, uh, before it was, before it has begun to suffer its recent, uh, and by recent, I mean relative in my realm, uh, uh, as a man of age and experience, uh, the, the Barrow Maze has begun to suffer some troubles with the uh, the undead. And before that, uh, before that time, uh, families would bury uh, from 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 hundreds, even thousands of years ago. Some say people would bury their dead here. And uh, when some crypts became too full, the doors would be bricked up. So if it, if you wish to get through a sledgehammer, you do not wish to use a war maul or a war hammer or any other sort of blunt object. You don't wish to risk damaging your weapon. Uh, smashing brick and clay you want to use uh, a, a fine sledgehammer like this one only five gold pieces uh using using a, a sledgehammer like this will allow you to go through a brick wall in about 10 minutes or 30 minutes if it's only one of you if you get three sledgehammers and there's three of you you could get through a a, a, a whole brick wall in about 10 minutes so would you like to buy three sledgehammers Yeah, I guess so. I'm not really one for feats of strength. I am. I do have strength of feet, but not feats of strength. Well, she it's looks uh, looks like to, to be the kind of warrior who who could uh, wield one of these in each hand and smash down the wall herself twice as fast as any man. They all do. That's why I'm going with them. Ah. <clears throat> well, Carthos, and, wait how 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 tall are you, Carthos? Like, how big of a tiefling are you? About five six. Five six? Okay. I'm five two, so <laughs> yeah. but but, strong yeah. five two. I'm a I'm a CrossFit five two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have an All eight right. in strength. This is not my strong yeah. suit. Cool. I didn't even think to wield two of these things, but I don't want to spend half my money. Uh, out of game, looking at these sledgehammers, they are two-handed only. He's kind of like trying to butter you up to buy uh, more than you're capable of. What you know, a dick. <laughs> well, like how much are they? Five, five yeah. gold each? Five gold each. Yeah, yeah, I'll get one. Yeah, I mean, right. I'll, I'll pick one up if it's, you know... Um... All right. Ah, two. And and you, sir, Mr. My 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 dragonborn friend in, in the back here. Uh would you like to wield yourself a uh a sledgehammer to be able to break down walls and 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 get to that sweet, sweet uh lucre within the barrow maze? Uh again, am I able to wield uh two hands? I don't think I can. can I? Oh uh this is this is this is not actually used as a weapon. This is a piece of oh. equipment. So yes, you 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 are capable of if, if you can do this. You can wield the sledgehammer. <laughs> one, so. In that yeah. case, sure. Uh, if she's going to have one, I'm going to I'm going to get one too. Wonderful. So you have three sledgehammers to break down walls quickly, and you have the fourth for the lookout for when the noise attracts all the monsters. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That'll be fifteen gold, please. Say that one more time. What was the what? second half there? I'm sorry. What was that? The fourth sledgehammer. What was that for? Are you uh, staying in the back and telling the story? Yeah. So you need someone to watch your backs because you you. It, gotta watch the six. This, this, I'm sorry. I'm just saying we gotta watch. Someone's gotta watch the six. We're very occupied while we're banging down a wall. Absolutely. And you, uh, this is your first time down there. I have never been. I, 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 I deal in trade, friends. I do not deal with uh, adventuring. I sell to adventurers. But uh, a little, a little tip. Those who come back from the Barrow Maze have told me that they experience a silence there, unlike anything they've ever heard. So they've experienced a sound of silence. They have. <laughs> mm. And darkness is its old friend. 
That sounds well, like a song. I should write that for the loot. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little disturbed. You're feeling inspired, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and we have okay, somebody saying that they might be might be scarred permanently. Uh, well, we appreciate well, that the leeches that did that to Wade. Yeah, that was definitely the leech conversation that did that. So, uh, yeah, yes, uh, that that is the thing. So, if uh, any sign of life can quickly draw the attention and the ire of the undead and other creatures that live there, uh, we we understand that there are lizard folk who live there. There seems to be a quite uh, quite a. Uh, 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 you've you've heard about them raiding some of my caravans, the the lizard folk, the tribe of lizard folk that live within the the Barrowmore. Um, nasty business with them. I have a bounty out on heads uh, on heads of theirs. So if you uh, happen to run across any, let me know. I'll reward you accordingly. Hmm. Maybe not this time around. We'll keep it in mind. Very well, very well. And uh, you were asking for a healing kit, I believe, as well. Yes? Yeah, like a first aid kit. Like I'm, I'm no stranger to hurting myself, so mm -hmm. I do, I do know how to like mend. Must like do some basic first aid. Very well. Well, I have one here. It's a standard issue adventurer's healing kit. Uh, has all of the all of the necessary parts, bandages, and you know, uh, 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 bandages. <laughs> it has everything you need. Uh, Bandages, basically. No, uh, it's a full kit though, and it weighs about ten pounds. Uh, I have this on sale right now for. Uh, I have this on sale right now for ten gold. It's a deal. <laughs> Seven. I'll pay for this one. I have some gifts in healing myself, so I'll take this along as well. Seven. Well, you did buy three sledgehammers, so I suppose I will let you get away with me robbing me blind like this once. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. trust, though, young lady. No, just just fa friends and family discount. We were friends. We're friends, right? Right. Sure. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you, good sir. Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay, so a healer's kit. Uh, I and then three sledgehammers. Is there anything else that you might require? Fishing line. Fishing line. Oh, fishing line is very, very important. Uh, I have a good fishing uh, tackle, the whole kit right here. Only oh, two gold. I've got my own rod. I just need more line. More line, more line. All right, I could part with that for two silver. You're making me break up the kit, though. I hope you are aware of that. Well, I'll trade you a hammer for it later. <laughs> I don't take used goods. <laughs> oh. No, that is the crazy wizard in his in his cockeyed leaning tower of of uh, jerkiness that comes in here is so condescending, talking about how normal all my sundries are. But then he comes and takes little bits for his experimentation as he sees fit, but talks down to me the whole time. He's my playing. friend, when we return with these hammers, they will not be used. They will be items of legend. You'll want one back. Trust me. It'll be worth three times what we bought it from you. Well, you know, the Bastards of Bogtown once said the exact same thing to me, and I still haven't gotten those hammers back, so we'll have to see. What's and realizing he doesn't me? have any change. Now I have to find out what happened to them. Oh, they're, they're, they're still around. They just haven't uh, accomplished anything of note since they came in here and, and bought all of my stuff with their starry-eyed dreams of glory. And, I mean, to be frank, I have the highest of hopes for each of you. But you are hardly the first to come in here with uh, with with the biggest of plans. So you, you say know. the bastards of Bogtown haven't accomplished anything. Did they find a way out of here? Did they actually go to the Barrow Maze? They they did. They went to the Barrow Maze. They've gone back. Uh, they've gone back and forth several times. As a matter of, uh, I should actually give them credit. I should give them just a little bit of credit at least. They did come in with some rather interesting items recently that I purchased off of them. A very 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 nice chalice, jeweled chalice. It was a uh, quite the uh i sold it for double just to let you know but it was it was worth quite a pretty penny uh but furwig the frenetic as he calls himself i think he's um uh he he likes his coffee a lot so he's a little you know jittery 
uh, he he came to me with 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 this gorgeous chalice, and uh, I I bought it from him for three hundred and thirty three gold. I resold it for six hundred and sixty six. That 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 that's my kind of adventure. That's what gets my heart racing. I don't know about the rest of you, but I I enjoy a good deal. Where might we find Fergan? You said. Uh, Furwig. Furwig. Furwig, the frenetic. Uh, the Bastards of Bogtown, I believe, are back in Bogtown, which is about a two days' journey to the east. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but, you know, now that it is Barrow May season, I imagine they'll be making their way back here very shortly, along with a number of the other companies who, are, who make up my regulars. You, are, you happen to be the first of the season. There should be lots more coming in soon. Your regulars. Is there a place where your regulars hang out? Someone who might... Yeah, the, the early grave. Like I said, my friend, uh, you are the literally the first here for the, the start of the season. More will be coming in. Some would even venture to say that your quest is ill-advised, for it is too early. I think it's just right. The early bird gets the worm. But the second mouse gets the cheese. Oh, details, details. Is there I anyone in that. town who regularly provides, say, maps to the barrow. Sadly, the resident cartographer never made it back from his last journey. Do you know anybody who has gone in the barrow maze before? We might be looking for somebody to help help us navigate. Oh, you're looking for a guide. Well, you could speak with Zachary, the town crier, and he can put out a call. He cut. He gets out at noon every day. Uh, as it is two o'clock now, the soonest he'd be able to get out would be tomorrow. Um, but he would be available to uh, put out a call, or I do happen to know a guy. He's a little fickle to deal with, but he might be able to get, he, he could get you to the maze and back. Is everyone in this town fickle? <laughs> well, when they... I... Towards adventures, I would expect it. Yes. there There is a healthy skepticism of, of of individuals in your industry simply because of the uh, the soaring mortality rate. So not they 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 is they, as nice they as me. No, no friend, they are not. So uh, his name is Yax. I can have him come and speak with you, if you wish. Do that, please. Very well, very well. Um, he he takes out a notepad, writes a little note, and says, uh, "I I shall I shall send a messenger to him." Uh, momentarily, or shortly. He, I believe he's over in the gambling house. He likes to uh, play the dice. It's a bad habit. If you, uh, if you catch him at a game and win, uh, you might be able, he might be indebted to you. I, mean, I, didn't, know, I didn't know you had a whole house of it here. We were just playing in the inn last night, but you have a whole casino? Well, I wouldn't say it's a casino. It's a... Uh, it is a well, basically yes, it's a casino, <laughs> but but a very a very small one. Uh, it is uh, the the foul pheasant. It's uh, it's not very far from here at all. Uh, it, it it is it is a gambling house and rumored and, and it's actually on the backside. You recognize it's actually located over here, on the backside of uh, the early grave. It's rumored to also be a house of ill repute. On behalf of the group, I'd like to recommend that Irina Shire not gamble on our behalf. She is already indebted to me, uh, so I think any one of us should take on any other debts uh, to acquire a guide. Not my scene. But I think I can help. Very well, very well. Is there anything else that, uh, that I could provide for you? How about food? Sustenance, energy of any kind, anything. Uh, I, I do have rations. Don't worry, I got us covered. The fish. I worry after you take out the leeches. Well, no, there's lots of things in there to eat: fish heads, leeches, moss, moss. I'll soup. take two days rations just in case. Two I might throw rations. up the first day. Very well, very well. Happy to provide rations for you, sir. Uh, rations right now. I do have some fresh in, brand new, ready to go, freshly cooked. Uh, that will be uh, two gold for two days' rations. Wow, you are 
pricey. So out of character, I what legit can, you get can this fish close. for us. What's that? <laughs> Oh, you want you oh. want to see if you can, you you can you could forage you could forage. I would yeah. recommend though that knowing that you're going into a haunted swamp, that things might be tainted with evil and therefore not the most potable. <laughs> that, that that's yeah. fair, but it was kind. Of, the, one what of are the you trying to say about things is evil? Is you can like get double the amount of like edible, like safe to eat food. So uh, while I'm playing it up as like it's going to be totally disgusting, I I can feed you guys something that won't kill you along the way. <laughs> That, Unless okay, the that GM says, no, 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 yeah, everything is poisonous, you're screwed. The, you know? <laughs> well, I, I will tell you, as, as a creature of the uh, as a creature of the swamps, you know that the closer you get to the barrows, uh, the more tainted the water. Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, uh, and that could simply be because of the fact that, uh, you know, you're going into a, a area where there's uh, burial grounds and, like, yep. Everything's large. Everything's leaching out. Everything's leeching out. Or it could be something far more nefarious. Mm. Who's to say? In that case, I'll take one day rations. Just as one go, please. Yep. We're supposed to come back in a day, guys. Come on. Yeah, we're not spending the night. Yeah. I got a day's worth. I'm going to come back tomorrow and get me some nice stew. I got nets to tend at night, too. Very well. So where, where would you guys like to go next? And what would you like to do? I want to go find this Yaks guy at the... We got a gambling house to, to try to acquire Yaks, right? I want to yeah. see this group gallop through the gambler's gauntlet on the way to the bear mine. So let's <laughs> head on over to the foul pheasant. You guys head over to the foul pheasant. And inside, this... this uh, you, as you walk in, you are greeted with uh, uh, the sight of a drunken man passed out in a chair. You see uh, a couple of old men sitting at a corner table playing cards. You could tell that they've had this game going literally forever. Um, you know, and they're, you know, checking their cards, tossing coins in. They each have some sizable stacks of gold. Uh, they uh, and as you watch a couple of hands, you could see that they're basically playing penny ante with stacks of gold in front of them. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and uh, looking about in the back corner, you see um, a couple of gentlemen playing dice, and you can hear a little bit of hooting and hollering, and you know. Now that that seems my scene. All right, but and, I suppose uh, we have to go to wherever Yax is. I'm just gonna like be like Yax, Yax, just yelling. Who, who, who or we could just abandon there? subtlety entirely. Excellent. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, you, you can't just come into my establishment here and start just yelling out people's names. Are are you are 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 you Yax's wife? Are you oh. Yax's wife? Hell no. <laughs> okay, well, then, um, look, I'm trying to just run a simple gambling hall here, and I don't need people coming in here causing all kinds of drama. So uh, 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 what, what, what is your business? It's okay. We'll ask everybody this, individually. This is a little halfling spitfire that just comes out like the minute anybody raises a voice in the middle of the day and starts disturbing the customers. Mm -hmm. She just comes out. She's just like right up at you. That's you. Calm down. We just need to talk to the man and we're kind of on a time crunch. So I just figured rather than going to everybody's business and looking at everybody's table and stuff, I just yell out and just see who responded. Did anybody oh, well, respond? He's, 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 he's right over there. And she indicates the, the rather rotund gentleman who is passed out. Big bushy black hair, big bushy black beard. He's got a bottle in his hand and he's just slumped over in his chair. Oh, crap, he's drunk. All right. Perfect. Go over there. And I'm like, thank you. Guys you guys got some odd use of perfect. Splash in his face and wake him up. All right. Okay. So you splash uh, you, you splash uh, some water in his face. <laughs> what? Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh. Come on, buddy. It's time for you to get, get some good sleep. Get some good sleep because you're taking us to the bear maze tomorrow. 
Who the hell are you? We've just been playing dice for like an hour with you. And Give you said a... that if, and if you lost, then you would uh then you would take us to the bear maze and you lost, dude. Give, give me a deception check. <laughs> uh, uh, Mold looks very confused right now with that statement because like now he feels that he's been in a time warp for the past. <laughs> uh, 19. Nice. 19. 19. All right. So I have our, our plan here. <laughs> uh, insight check. With disadvantage for drunkenness. He's like, he 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 looks at you, processes what you said, looks at his bottle, looks back at you. I I said what? Yeah. You and oh. I bet you and I bet on a dice roll that if if you lost, you would take us into the barrow maze free of charge. You lost, dude, and then you passed out. Oh hell. He chucks the bottle and it smashes up against the wall. <laughs> it was empty, so it's just shattered glass all over the floor now. But it was, he he'd suck that thing bone dry. <laughs> uh, oh. yes. All right, fine. When uh okay. Okay. Um oh uh, when are you leaving? Sleeping. What time is it? What what day is it? What time is it? It's early yeah. afternoon, friend. We'll gather you oh, in you about <laughs> ten hours from now. You, you're you're not leaving tonight, right? That's suicide. No, 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 no. No, we're leaving at first light tomorrow. Oh, okay, so I I can go back to sleep. Okay. Um. All right. I'll meet <laughs> you. I'll, I'll meet you. I'll meet you at the town well. At sunrise and I'll, I'll i'll take you anything uh, else we bring or you'd recommend well don't die and that's what we got you <laughs> for buddy that's smart uh, you, you asked what i recommend i said don't die last group i took out there didn't come back i i left them behind at sunset that, that, that i i left that that I told I must have told you I must have told you when you agreed to this when we made the bet right I told you this you know you know what I'm gonna say you know what I'm gonna say don't you because I tell everybody this that I say that I'm gonna guide I, yep. I tell I, yep, yeah you know yeah. yeah I say yep. I don't go into the barrow maze I don't go down there I will take you to the door you go down you do whatever it is that you do but if you're and not you back I leave four hours before sunset and I don't stay a minute longer my yep. brother stayed a minute longer and you know what happened to him he died you know what happened he got eaten by a white that is not happening to me that is not happening to me my mother had two sons and i'm the smart one clearly mm. i would have liked to have met the other mm. Well, you know, he's probably walking around undead someplace in the in the barrel maze right now. I don't now, think so I want to meet him like that. Might, you might just. You want me to bring him back for uh, you if we find him? Brotherly reunion. I must be a the story for <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I think I know how that story ends. No, that wizard guy might be able to help him out. Uh, well, if it makes you right. feel any better, I'm sorry, I, I gotta get another brothers. drink, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll uh -uh. see you in the hey, morning. Hey, hey, hey! hey. Hmm? What? We, what? You don't, you don't need another drink. We don't need you hungover tomorrow. I think you need to go and get some food, and then you need to go sleep. That was my food. Three Your beer? Yeah, uh, it's it's like bread in a can, bread in a bottle. So good, mm -hmm. so good. You know? Yeah. If he's besides, sober, he might remember where he's going, and that might be bad. If if he you you get the impression that if this guy's sober, he might not remember the way. Also that. All right. Or he might remember to be scared. There is that. There is that. He yeah. might remember like it's a bad idea. All right. Mm-hmm. Alrighty then. Well, the next morning. Next morning comes. 
Oh, do you have any other before I before I, I shouldn't rush this before that? Do you have any other business you wish to accomplish or anything else you'd like to do before we embark? I can't think of anything. Don't think so, but no, I'm good. I want to go. Okay, go. All right. Go rest All right. Up. Well, with that, you have a you have a somber dinner. Or you actually have uh, Eric invites you to dinner at the uh, the at the the early grave, and he pays for a feast. He mm. pays for a feast. And you guys eat and drink, and he's trying to get you to carouse and sing songs. And at this point, the tavern is getting pretty full. And you can see it in the eyes of the people around you. Anybody that's, that's from here looks at you with a mixture of amusement and pity. That beats what I usually get. I usually get hate and fear. So I'll take amusement and pity. Yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you treat us to a little song, bud? You know, if we're yeah, gonna die, we end the bed. I can't sing worth a damn. Well, no, well, your little lute. Did you say you played a oh, lute? Oh, that I can do. That yes. Yeah, we don't. You don't gotta sing if you can't sing. I don't want to hear you sing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Most people go, "Wait, how bad is it?" All right. Really so, Brett, do you want to do you want to see if you can sing for some for sing sure. point? Are you, Brett, do you want to like uh, get get up and play your lute and tell a story for some coin? Sure, absolutely. All right, give me uh, give me a series of performance checks. We're gonna. I want three successes before you hit three failures. Three successes before three failures. Okay. <laughs> yep. Twelve. All right, that's one. That's nice. Two. All right. Oh, oh, you hit a flat that note. That joke was a dud. Yeah, you told you, you told you told the joke, Ooh. and nobody wants to hear about the farmer's wife. But that's okay. Oh. It was a setup for a much better joke. Yep. And as a matter of fact, I will tell you right now, uh, you you passed your hat around at the end of uh, at, at, after you get up and uh, and tell this this ta this body tale, and uh, you wind up getting uh, all told, you get. Four gold and three silver. Cheers to that. Yeah, that or the equivalent of that. You know, so, some some guy, of course, put in a piece of chewing gum. You know, but of course, of course, as is. I'd, I'd be shocked if there weren't a couple paper clips and some string in there. Yep, uh, but you know, you're, you 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 little press the digitation and boom, you know, all gone. So no problem there. Uh, and he said, and Eric boldly proclaims, friends. Legends will be told of us. Stories shall be told of us around fires for years and years. And, and uh, yeah, cautionary tales. You may think that, friend. You may think that. But behold, the intrepid adventurers of legend will be legendary. Rest well, for tomorrow we ascend. We ascend to greatness. Good night, friends. And he goes upstairs to retire. You never say that. You never... You don't... You have to be on the adventure before you can say something like that. It's like telling an actor, good luck. <laughs> I look over to Sicarius and I'm like, okay, dude, I'm just going to go to bed. I prefer to not have to share a room with you. I won't go anywhere. You can sleep outside my door if you want. I made a deal with the innkeeper. He'll keep you apprised of your location. Cool. Yes, sir. And then I'll, I'll go off to sleep. All right. Go into my shack. I'll be back in the morning. And I... Mm-hmm. Do my do my gate. Yep. yep. Rolling gate out the door. Yep. <laughs> gonna go upstairs. No special arrangements. Just gonna go to bed. Wow. Alrighty. The night passes quietly. Things are uneventful in this town. Morning comes. 
and you went to bed early enough and drank little enough that you feel rested and you're not hungover. Uh, as you come down, Bolo has prepared a simple light breakfast for you. Uh, there's biscuits, there's gravy, there's greasy bacon, um, you know, some, some basics, and of course, a mug of ale for each of you. A light ale. And you in the back, you can smell coffee. Cool. Um, I'll go up to Bolo and throw a flask on there and be like, uh, can you uh, top me off, friend? Because I uh, might need it a little later. Two silver. All right. Two silver is the good stuff. You don't want the piss water. No, I don't want the piss water. Yeah. No. Right. It, th th this ain't no place that does 25 cent PBR, let me tell you. <laughs> Hey, I am drinking PBR right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love going and getting the PBR and getting a brandy glass and then pouring the PBR <laughs> in and be like, mm. oh, you <laughs> yeah, and like fancy Stein pinky out filled That's with PBR. My jam. There you go. All right, you come out and the next and 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 you have your breakfast. Eric is talking just the whole time talking everything up going, we are going to be, you know, just, just on the same track. And you get the impression this guy's got some serious daddy issues, uh, you know, like fatherly approval issues. And, uh, but you, you go outside and Yax is standing by the well. He is considerably uh, disheveled. It looks like he did not, when, when, you, when he said he was going to go home and go back to bed, uh, he probably fell. It looks like he fell asleep right in that chair. That might be home for him, for all we know. But he stands there, and he's, you know, red-eyed and, yeah, morning, morning, good morning. Good morning. Did you have morning, friend? Oh, this is way too early for this crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you need to. We're, so we're going. You, you're sure about this? Yeah. Oh, we're sure. All right. All right. This is not okay. Well, like I said, my rule is I don't go down there. You know, I I, I have this, and he points to a sword. All right. Well, for he says I I have this, and he points to uh, what looks to be a beer bottle. A large, like one, you know, like large bottle, like a growler of beer on his belt. And he's like, Oh, no, sorry, uh, I have this. And then he points to the sword <laughs> that's sitting on the other hip. I have this for my own protection as I stand over the barrel maze. But the best protection I've got is this. So, uh, you know, don't, don't take too long. Uh, oh, no, that growler looks pretty good for uh, killing anything unnatural. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it keeps the demons at bay is all I can tell you. It does not. I'm right here. I Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, friend. Sorry. I meant the metaphorical ones. I didn't mean the, the uh, uh, yeah, I stuck my foot in that. Yeah, we got a turtle. We got a turtle. We got a tiefling. We got a dragonborn. Watch what you say, friend. Yeah. I th he's a dragonborn? I thought he was a lizard. Oh, uh, I did it again. Did I just do a racism? I did a racism. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you're not going to breathe fire or anything on me, are you, bud? Not at the moment. Okay, cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. Uh, he, he, holds, he holds out his fist for a fist bump. <laughs> you're not sure. getting a fist bump on him, bro. He's not getting a fist bump. All right. <laughs> just, to, uh, just to kind of set it real quick, like when Maul shows up the next morning, since we're in mm -hmm. our traveling gear, he's basically wearing like a net over him that's got everything tied to it because obviously he, he doesn't wear clothes per se. So he looks like a European traveler with like mm -hmm. everything tied to to like his chest with a fishing pole strapped across his shoulder blades on his back and holding surprisingly like a very elegant like trident that's got like um 
like flowers along the the twines that'd be quite beautiful if it wasn't also like stained with like fish guts and other sorts of you know yeah, tools of his, tools of his craft <laughs> what color headband are you wearing what color eye is he wearing oh um, nothing Blue, he just purple orange <laughs> and red so. that would be four yep. Green, you can't see red. it. Clearly on a on a staff here, but also it's got three prongs, so it could be, you know, giant sigh. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the question is, are you uh cool but rude or do you do machines? Yeah, you know, that's that's <laughs> that's really the question right there. So all right. Friends, let us embark. And Eric starts marching his way out of town, and Yax is like Wrong way, dude. Oh, you you lead us, sir. Yeah, that that's what I'm here for. Okay. Yax is like, all right, all right, guys, let's get this train wrecker rolling. Let's go. What is a train? I don't even know. Uh, but let's get the <laughs> trains don't exist. Train, trains don't trains. exist. <laughs> what is this Eberron? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I've seen always it. wanted to play Eberron. The, the 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 bottle demons tell me weird things. It's just let's just let's go. All right. I think you're onto something. I think you're onto some cool invention, though. <laughs> yep. You take the beat. You take. Uh, you take the road out of town, that goes into. Uh, that quickly, uh, goes off road, into the swamp. The water starts ankle deep, then gets to be about knee deep, and uh, you do manage to navigate your way around all kinds of uh, natural threats and predators within the uh, within the waters. Uh, snakes, leeches, of course. You do manage to, to get around all this and 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 you going is slow. It's no lie. This this you know this takes almost twice as much time and effort as as walking along a normal road would. Uh, you know it's hot. Or actually you feel hot because of all of the effort, but as you sweat, the cool clamminess uh, of of the mist on the on the moor keeps it, it's almost like natural air conditioning. So at, at some points you feel overheated and exhausted, and other points you just feel like chilled to the bone. It can be kind of unpleasant, but as the as the sun rises, the mist does not depart. It does not melt away. It does not burn away like it normally does. In fact, it almost seems like it gets thicker. Going is also slow because of the fact that you have to be careful of not being able to see more than 10, 15 feet in front of you at times. This mist is persistent and it is heavy. Uh, you walk for a solid Two hours. You walk for three hours. Okay. The ground itself, as you get about three and a half hours into the hike, this slow slog through the swamp three and a half hours in, the ground starts to angle upward a little bit. The water goes from your knees to mid-calf to your ankles to finally you're trotting upon land at almost four hours of hiking. The fog is thickest here. It is incredibly difficult to navigate, uh, but you persist. I'm going to break out my loot and play something to kind of keep our spirits up and keep him focused. Don't do that. There's like dead things around. You trying to like bring them to us like you're the fucking Pied Piper? Sorry, language. <laughs> it's all right. M my boss is watching, so. Don't get tall fire him, please. It's all me. I have, a, I have the mouth of a sailor. I'm trying to watch it. <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a sailor, and we're all theater people. So, yeah. It, it, cool. It, the, the fact that we've only let one go this entire session so far is a miracle unto itself. Yeah, it just so. occurred to me I hadn't sworn yet. I'm confused. 
<laughs> I've, I've been I've been holding it in check. I was like, all right, stay on target, stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> but now, but now the now the but now it's been shattered, and we can just drop them at random now. The first one's flown, so oh no! Let, please, please, please don't, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you, uh, oh, I should actually get back onto the correct layer. Uh, as you can see, if you guys pull your map out, you can see that uh, I have a token in the bottom left corner. Uh, I'm doing this specifically because, oh, I should probably let everybody else see what's going on here too. Yeah, like it's dark in here. Yeah, bottom left corner. See a beautiful as you, black square. We see a big black square on our, our end. Oh, do you really? Yeah. I thought I gave, oh, hold on a second. Advanced. Uh, Unless we're not supposed to see everything you're showing us right now. No. Uh, <laughs> one of the things about this is that I actually want the players to be able to be the ones who start mapping this thing out. Nice. Um, oh, but I also just realized that the view that I have on here is the DM view. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, that I'm sending to the feed. So <laughs> we're going to just kill that. Don't I'm worry. Gonna edit that, I'm going to edit that out of the archive. Um, <laughs> Man, I'm smart. <laughs> Technology. Oops. Technology. All right, advanced. Uh, what is? Oh no, it's the gear icon. That's what I'm. Doing. I'm getting distracted. Tokens. Yeah, you guys can't see anything, so I'm gonna. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then you know what? We're we're actually just. I'm in a theater of the mind. This as opposed to giving, uh, you guys the opportunity. Uh. To, to try and navigate a map right now that none of you have tokens to see. Uh, it's just that it's a hex map that we're navigating. So as a result, it's not easy for me to just stick a token on there for everybody and have it go. Um, but Yax is like, all right. You hear that? Give me a round of perception checks. By the way, Yax, you have watched him literally drain that growler on the walk. And when oh, he emptied weird. it, when he emptied it, he chucked it and pulled another one out of his satchel and put it back on his head and put the new one on his hip. And the more he drank, the more functional he became. <laughs> oh, good oh God, God, guys. Not go well. Wow. <laughs> Seven, Wait. six, two. Uh, all right. So. Uh, but uh, I don't think Securius. He yeah, might be. You got to you got to save us, buddy. What I need you to do is go onto your because Matt, you've never played before, so we're going to walk you through this. Okay, you need okay. to go onto your character sheet in D and D Beyond. Yeah. Look in the skills tab. Okay. I want you to look in the skills tab, and I want you to uh, or the skills list on uh, it's the main column. About two thirds of the way down is perception. Uh. Yep. Yeah. And I, want you know what? I want you to click uh, when, it, when it says perception, oh, and then there's so like scary. plus two, minus two, plus zero, whatever it is. What is it for your character? What is it for Sicarius? Plus four. Plus four. Oh, okay. You might, okay. You might, okay. You might be our savior. Don't don't everybody get hot and bothered here, but he might just be the it one to save it. Go on, go ahead and here, click the plus four, and then when it comes up with the description, hit the button that says beyond 20. You can also right yeah. click, I think. And it, oh, you're it, leaning it, so it, far yeah. into this fail. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to overspeak. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, I'm I really hit the plus rude. four and I roll the four, so I got eight. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So so here, so uh so Yax is like and everybody's leaning in, you're all like, What? What is it? What is it? And he's like, shut up. He's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. You hear that? No. I hear you. That's silent. That is the quiet of the grave. We want to be as quiet as possible. And he's true. He's right. Once you once he mentions it, you notice that there are no crickets, there are no birds. There's no bird song. There's no sign of life. It is. This is the silence that you that Bolo mentioned, the silence of that tomb, that he mentioned. It is silent like you've never heard honestly you think that if if anyone were to make a noise right now that sound could travel for miles this is why i didn't want you to play the lute 
But the bard takes that as a dare. Uh, if you want to get eaten, friendo, that's on you. Okay, but we need to be quiet. But follow me. And if you look closely, you could follow the waystones. Even when it's really foggy, you could fo follow the waystones up to Barrow Number Twelve. That's the that's that's the first one that we ever discovered that has that's an entrance down to the maze. Okay, so if you follow me, we'll go. And it is slow going. I want a round of stealth checks from everybody, please. <laughs> so yeah uh matt same thing as before you just hit stealth instead of uh perception so how do i do it so it pops up in the uh the uh you, did you install did you install beyond 20 uh, the, I think I that's better. uh yeah. the the browser plugin you know what i don't think i did <laughs> okay not a problem then you know what you could do? Uh, you can look at your modifier in the uh, on the character sheet for your stealth. Yep. And then you can in, uh, you go into roll twenty in the little chat window in the bottom right corner, and you type slash roll space one d twenty plus whatever, and then hit enter. All consecutive one d twenty plus, and for me it's two. So yeah, so one d twenty plus two. You are a ninja sir yeah actually uh the, the barbarian is slightly stealthier than you but you are like one with the ground and nothing you know you you make no sound as you tread uh everybody though even uh even our poor bard who is insisting on humming to himself very quietly as he goes uh you manage to traverse this without uh drawing any attention from anything that could be potentially dangerous uh, and, oh, before I forget, as we're getting closer, uh, hold on a second. Oh, uh, no. as, we're, as we're getting closer and the, the the ground starts to or the the fog starts to get denser and denser you notice that your brave leader is suddenly at the back of the formation dude you should be up like in the front of this <laughs> ha ha uh You're right. You're right. Colonel Sanders. He's not leading us. Who is? Well, Yax is. Uh, right. Um. Come on. Come on. Your daddy will be so proud. You say you led us into here. Right. Right. Come on. Okay. He 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 marked. Uh. He 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 walks forward. He takes a breath. And boldly marches forward. Got a boy. And trips on a rock and hey! <laughs> and you can hear that hey, 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 hey. From miles. Ooh, the toque. <laughs> and he's Too late now. Just run. 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 Uh, and Yax is like, Yax just takes the bottle out of his out of his belt and just takes a big old pull and he's just like, "What's well, better than him pulling out the sword? Because then we know we were well and truly screwed." He 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 looks at you guys like he knows he's going home alone tonight. You know that that's what that he looks at you guys and he's just like, "I have that look many nights." Yep. Give me uh give me one round of perception checks, please. We did so well on this last time. Yeah. <laughs> Our luck has to change, right? I don't know. Wait a minute. Yeah, I got better. That'll oh. do. Man. After a very, very, very tense pause. 
nothing else breaks the silence. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Well, you would, at the very least, you don't think anything is coming at you right now. So Yax uh, looks at you like, you sure? And he, right, he turns and, and shakes his head, and he's just like, all right, you continue. And I will, uh, just, just just for sanity's sake, I'm going to wave the, uh, the last remaining stealth check. And as you approach, uh, as you approach the, uh, the entrance... The fog seems to part a little bit, almost unnaturally. There's a you you could see that you've been walking as and as the fog lightens a little bit, you could see that you've been walking along a path with stones on either side of it. This is the it's almost like the welcome entrance, uh, the the welcome wagon, as it were, the or the the path that leads right up to the mouth of of the barrow. And you see. A hole, or uh, a, a great mound. We didn't bring shovels. We brought hammers. What's what's the uh, mound made of? Is it like a grassy? Is it look freshly piled? It's, it's, it's grassy. It's dirt. Uh, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, there, it, it's basically like a. The 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 hills are it goes up at like a, a hill about like a gentle slope that goes up about 30, 35 feet. Hold on one second. I actually want to pull up the uh the proper info here. And I'm gonna give you guys an illustration. And I realized that I didn't have this cut out in time. My fault. Uh Love it. Love but yep. Yeah. The great map is 35 feet high or bit wide. Well, uh, high. So, yeah. That's a big house. Yep. Hold on. And that is page 206 and 207. One moment. I'm... Let me see if I can pull this out in time. Okay, cool. Got that. I'll save as. Oh, wait. Image. <laughs> All right. Here we go. And it's uploading and one second. Loading recent uploads. Oh, I have to turn into a handout, damn it. All right, two more seconds. Handout, and... oh, The dramatic tension is killing me, guys. I don't know about you, but it's killing me. Um... Yep, that right there looks to be the entrance to where you're going. Now, is the door the off, off also, or is that just the artistic rendition? Uh, the door, the doorway is where it is, uh, and he kind of takes you around the side of it and uh, says, "No, no, no, we, we don't, we don't go up the hill. We go around this way," and you you come to that entrance uh, in in the great mound, uh, and. 
you could see that, like I mentioned, the, the mound is encircled with standing stones. And as you uh, go in, you can smell, you come around to this entrance and you smell the entrance before you see it. You smell it before you see it. And you can smell the stench of death coming up out of the ground. Can I take a closer look at these big stones that are around, like if they're ruins or anything on it? Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, go on ahead and give me a investigation check, as a matter of fact. Four. I'll take a look. I like to look like I'm being smart and inquisitive and hmm. Yeah, well, then I will take that as inspiration rather than providing it for once. And I too will investigate. <laughs> yeah, you can. It looks like a rock. It looks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a rock. And uh, that's. That's another rock. And this looks I mean, like you're being you're being very very thorough as you look around here. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> and does it look like it looks in the drawing? It has like a stone slab a pushed out, like somebody kicked it yeah. down. Whoa. Yeah. That's uh, not well, Yax Yax says that there are, there are barrows for hundreds of yards burial mounds and some of them this is the one that leads into the maze but looters robbers other people come through here all the time and just rob these graves so you know some but some of these bears are buried some of them are still sealed up some of them are wide open and everything and then lost to time but they're uh yeah yeah so this one might already be ransacked Oh, no. The barrel maze? No. The barrel maze is not ransacked. The barrel maze consumes souls. I'll just oh, tell you that. Oh, right. yeah. that's all. Cool. Yeah. So, if this is where you want to go. I mean. You already walked here. It'd be a shame to turn back without a story. You're telling me there's probably some good stuff in there. And I can pay you back and you can just leave me the heck alone. Uh, and as you as you look around, uh, you also see in your investigation, you do see a number of boot prints on the grounds around here, along the path, and then going down into the into the entrance. You can see a number of boot boot prints coming, mostly going in. Some do come out. They can't be fresh, not if this is the thaw. Nope, they are. Not, a lot of them are not fresh. You can tell that they've been there for a while. Oh, well worn path. Yep. Are any going? Suppose we follow it. Well, are any of them going like beyond the hill, like kind of going around back or anything? Oh, sure. There, the thing is, is that as you look, you can see that the ground is still frozen and frozen over in some places from the winter, and you can actually see boot prints still frozen into the ground. And so it looks like somebody, like the the last group of adventurers that came through here before the winter hit, their footprints were. Fro uh, we're, we're, we're frozen into the land. These stones, these are tombstones or gravestones surrounding the... They the are standing stones. They are standing stones. Um, and you see that at the front door, there is a large stone slab broken in two. You can see that that was the original cover that covered the, the the entrance there it is sma it is broken in two vertically and it's out not in yeah, yeah i clocked that yep are, and, and are there any other footprints around there that don't look human well you know you identify some points that could be uh tabaxi or dragonborn uh, you also recognize, or you, you recognize some, 
you know, like a, a lighter step of an elf, perhaps, or, you know, the heavy, the heavy, but uh, small boot prints of a dwarf. And then there are some paw prints in the ground that you don't quite recognize uh, that come out and go back in. Sometimes you could see drag marks. And also, most disturbingly, you start to notice the bony footprints of what can only be a walking skeleton. And then the dragging, the drag marks of a dragging foot of perhaps an undead creature. Um, a walker, as it were. I'll walk up to like and the... I'll, I'll walk up to the doorway of it and be mm -hmm. like, hello. And, hop, and yell inside. <laughs> Yax is just like yeah. beside himself. Like, and actually. But I'm, I'm, I'm also kind of being off to the side. And like, and yeah, like, I can, I can tell you. wanted to play a loot. Don't. Oh, hold, hold on a second, because I can tell you right now, uh, you you doing that just changed the shape of things. So I actually need a couple of minutes to prepare this. We're going to take a brief intermission, folks. We're going to be back in 10. So if you uh, if you need to freshen up your drink, you need to go to the bathroom, take that time now. We will be back in 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, this just got interesting. No, it's great. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't be sorry. Well, you will be sorry. Do something. Otherwise, yeah, this is going to take an epic class in tracking. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we'll be right. Hey, this, this is how man. How how adventuring <laughs> parties really self destruct. This is how shit gets started. <laughs> if you guys, if you guys want, I'll leave you guys up on camera real quick, uh, so you can chat amongst yourselves. But I'll be back in exactly ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Gatorden, what's up, everybody? So, what do you think so far, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, so far it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's man. Fun. I immediately thought of the uh, my my favorite. I, play, I played World of Warcraft, and uh, my favorite character in World of Warcraft is Illidan, and he yeah. has a. Uh, did you did you guys play World of Warcraft? Anybody? I I did a while ago. I literally played the game for the first time on, like, Friday. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Illidan is a demon hunter who is, like, the... He's, like, the, the villain or the main ultimate boss you want to kill in the second expansion, which was the Burning Crusade. And this mm -hmm. whole tagline and all the trailers and all that was, you know, he flies up in the air with his demon wings and he's you are not prepared and so as he's <laughs> as you yell into this cavern <laughs> you are not prepared i think you are like you have no idea what you just did yeah oh yeah yeah my one of my the, the one of the last characters i played was very was the one because uh as a rogue like tip like uh you're, you're very dexterous and can dodge a lot of stuff and like can like I was the one that was always triggering the traps and like going in first and, you and get out of <laughs> exactly because usually because like um in a couple of levels for rogues you can uh it take like half damage so you can take like a totally terrible hit and then you'll be able and you'll probably survive so I'm like okay I'm probably gonna get stabbed from spears coming from all all the walls around me but I'll be able to be like and get like, and survive. <laughs> so I'm just I'm so used to just being like, okay, I go in there and like, hello, let me let me push, let me push and step on, let me trigger the things. No, oh, it it's it's funny because it that action reminds me like the very first time that I I was teaching my son to play D and D, mm -hmm. and he ran up into a cave where I had like mapped where he needed to go. And he did the same thing. He was like, is anybody here? 
And then, of course, that let all the kobolds know that somebody was at the mouth of the cave and they come yeah. swarming out at him. And he's like, no, this is not what I meant at all. And I was like, well, yep. it's what you did. That's what you did. So. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Women ruin D&D. Sometimes. Sometimes. Although, to be fair, that character was a boy. I played a boy flying monkey in that campaign, which... <laughs> Screwed up everybody's, huh? Uh, a legit Hadozi? Not a Hadozi. We just, we it was our first campaign we ever played. I, I'm also popping back in just to say that I strongly disagree with that assertion that women are on I completely no, no. disagree with it. I no. think that, yeah, no. No. Uh, but now, <laughs> I, now I do have to reset the encounter, but that is... Uh, or the, the, the plan for the encounters, because I did just roll a random encounter for you all over that, so this is going to be delightful on my end. Well, obviously, uh, I don't know the person who posted that, but it's like either they're serious and just trolling, or they're like joking around, like because she's the one who yelled into the cavern, like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, Somebody I'm, got to piss off I'm, the monster. I'm, I'm hoping that it's uh, that, that it's, it's, always, it's, always, yeah. it's always tough on the internet. That's the thing, is that you can never tell what the intent is behind text. What? Uh, you know, but regardless. Um, you know, somebody, yeah. somebody had to, somebody had to do something here. Yeah, whatever. Uh, no, but it was a, it, we just basically homebrewed a, a flying monkey just from the monster manual. Gotcha. Um, yeah, my husband was just like, he's like, he sent me a picture. He's like, what if you play this? And it loves snacks. <laughs> and I was like, that's, I love that. That's my, and this is the first time I've ever played. And I'm like, yeah, but I can do that. And so throughout the whole entire campaign, it was like, because I was rogue, I was a rogue, and just constantly like just getting into problems. If I saw food, I, I diverted and ate it. Um, but he was basically like a teenage boy, uh, kind of dude mentality. <laughs> but it kept screwing up everybody. My whole entire they're like, she's blah blah blah. I mean, I'm sorry, he. And I'm like, I can go either way. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be right back. Bye. Bye, Bye over. Bye over. Important. Yep. So, the curse of doing cold brew coffee when you are eighty when you are ADHD is that occasionally you will forget to take the coffee out of the coffee pot. Oh, you no. still have that high octane the stuff left over. Coffee hanging out in my fridge right now had a full thirty six hour brew. Ooh, oh, you have Lord. got some caffeine. You could light up Las Vegas for a week with that. I might. I might be able to. We're going to test that out tomorrow, and that's going to be real interesting. All right. Are you are you guys both on the East Coast? Uh, Matt I, I, and Blake are. Yeah. Oh. Brett, oh Matt and, uh, and and Brett is here in LA with us. Oh, sorry. So. Sometimes, literally. Yeah. Yeah, Brett. Uh, Brett SMs for me at Studio Stage during Fringe. So <gasps> stage manager. What? what? Yep. Actually, my wife is a way better stage manager than me. I just run the show. I'm a board operator. It's different. Awesome. You have to type tem, uh, type her name in our, our private chat. I wonder if we know our, we know each other. You know each other. It's uh, it's Aaron Moore or Aaron Scott, formerly Aaron Scott. Oh, uh, to, I don't, to, to, to use production manager, former production manager. Oh, I don't think we actually met. What? I know, I know. I'm like, I know the name. The idea that you know Jen and Greg, but not Aaron, is baffling to me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like, uh, well, because, but Brooke and I got to know each other because of all the shows that I was going around and doing Tipla and all the other stuff. Like, oh, back, yeah, that'll do it. Back when, uh, back before Equity nuked the 99 seat plan, we all got to, yeah. there was a whole big time when the community was out and everybody was getting to know each other better. And yeah, that was where a lot of that came from. Yeah, well, and so. Lee was my roommate for a while. Yes. So. Oh, we, yeah. We were, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been in your house many a time then. Oh, really? <laughs> your former house, yeah. Yeah, he's in that. Yeah, he moved in with me there when one of our roommates moved out, and he was like, "I need a place to live," and I'm like, "I need a roommate." I've known, <laughs> I've known him since 2004. Um, Lee and I, Lee and I went to college together in San Diego. And then he went off to school, and then we came back to LA. He was like, "I need a place to a place to live." The USD, right? I went. I went to UCLA. He went to. Oh, you went to UCLA? Okay. Yeah, he went Chico. Did he go Chico? Chico. Chico. That's why you went Chico. You said college in San Diego for some reason. I thought, well, I know we didn't go to 
state. Well, That's yeah, right, because both- I went to Sonoma and he went to Chico, and they're actually rivals if Division three schools yeah. could have that. Yeah, I went to we went to Miracosta College together down in Oceanside. Got you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they have like, no, that's Palomar. That's Palomar. Um, yeah. So we yeah we were in the theater department there for like two or three years, and then everybody kind of went their own transferred ways, mm-hmm. and then we reconvened back in LA, um, and we lived yeah, there I went to Orange Coast, and then up to Sonoma, and eventually stumbled my way to San Diego State for grad school. Nice, 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 nice. nice. I did my A school there in San Diego. They're yeah. um, just off of Coronado. Yes. You did what school? My my A school. So after I got out of boot camp, they had the uh, computer program there mm-hmm. and they were phasing it out of being in San Diego in preparation to move it back to the to the East Coast. Oh. So the running gag was we were living in all the, the old barracks that were being condemned and that <laughs> the base had even offered to convert them into homeless shelters Mm -hmm. and the city was like, Nope, these things aren't fit to be homeless shelters, (laughs) but that was where we were living. So not to mention, I have a funny feeling the Coronado residents had a big case of NIMBY. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was very, very interesting. And I tried to stay out on the West coast because I really enjoyed it. And Mm -hmm. they were like, Nope, get back to the East coast. Mm. And everything went from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we used to pack our our civilian clothes in our backpack because we had to go on Liberty in uniform. And there was like a bus stop that had a bathroom like right outside of there. So, of course, it was nothing but everybody in uniform oh. going into the... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. No, I, I, I want you to get back to telling that story in a second here because we got about like two more minutes before I, I said I'd be officially back. But do you guys have tokens loaded up for your characters? I'm trying to get everybody... What? Tabled here. What do we um, need to do to do that? Because I've always had uh, the well, DM drop them. Got it. Oh, easy. Okay. Well, hold on a second. Um, yeah, and if I need. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm so used to everybody. I, I can drop a token. Right. There's just no physic. There's no picture on it or anything yet. Gotcha. No sweat. Hold on one second. You're uh, you're I'm human, sure. right? Um, Brooke, you're playing what? human. Yes. You're playing human. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, and this is also me running into the fact that I had made a big mistake earlier and accidentally deleted half of the map that I had set up here. So I'm, I'm scrapping together a new one real fast. Colin did uh, that the other day and he nearly cried. Oh, <laughs> dude, like I did this 10 minutes before we started. So I've been trying to quietly fix things as we uh, as we've oh, been playing duh. along. But now that things have changed, I'm like, OK. Uh, Actually, uh, I, I think I just figured out how to do the. That day. All right. I'm just coming up with some generic ones for you guys real fast. You're good. You're good. I got. Uh, I know that this is not a tiefling, but it is a bard. So that's going to be uh, Carthos. All right, and then oh, I think that's how you. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. yeah, I'm switching these up because they normally they, they're not appropriate for normally I'll, I'll have custom tokens ready for everybody yeah I'll be, i just realized i didn't put a picture i could have done that see. Uh, almost back from our break and then finally our portal fighter I I keep editing the sheet, but I don't see where I could drop a anything in other than just the the picture picture. Oh well, it's the uh, I mean this this is one where you just you uh, upload a token or an image to roll twenty, and then I drag it to there. Yeah. So, um, okay, that, that, should, that should be in there for you then. Mold. Huh. Uh, 
Yeah. It's not coming up for me, so I'm just like I said, I'm designing one for you real fast here. Yeah, okay. it's all good. Uh, I'm dragging. I might. I think I'm. How did I get that over there before? Drag. And who has dark vision in the party? You. All right, one with dark vision. Copy that. Vision. I am one with my dark vision. <laughs> Vision. Night vision. Oh, it works like that. Whoops. I probably accidentally dropped like five tokens under this blackness. <laughs> I'm like, because I'm dragging. I thought I was able to drag and put a token down. But I think it's covered in dark. In dark. All right. And then lastly. Sure you've got it. <laughs> Everybody's uh beveraged and, and all set up. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna keep you guys here for the moment. Uh Brooke, give me uh give me a perception check real quick. <laughs> as we as we return to our adventure. Roll. Uh, eight. I don't know why it's not popping up on. Okay, so an eight. So you're you're leaning in and you lean back out and you're like, guys, what? And Yax is just <laughs> like, and Eric, poor Eric is in the back, back going like. You know, he's he's now considering the weight of everything that he has uh, that he has agreed to, and you recognize that you you look back and you realize that your hand is on something that doesn't feel like stone, it doesn't look like stone. You kind of pull your hand away. You had your fingers sitting in an eyeball or ah. a, 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 a eye hole for a skull. Ah. Yeah, and you look down and you notice that you're actually standing on bones littering the ground outside the entrance to this place and the stench the putrid stench of death just wafts out of this uh, out of this entrance and everybody else as, as you yelp and jump back everybody else give me a perception check please this is just me it's not an actual that goes through kind of stuff. Twenty-two. Okay, yeah, you guys all hear it, except for Brooke. <laughs> after af after an unnaturally long time, you hear, "Hello, hello, hello," sounding just like she did. Coming back up out. Banshee. What? There are stories. You hear voices just you hear voices crying just before you die. There's an, an, an undead called a banshee. It echoes the cry of the person who it's acting as the impending omen of death for. Test that theory and have someone else yell to see if it mimics back. Sure, oh, you first. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 I think this is enough of a story for me. I'm out of here. Give me give me a round of wisdom <laughs> checks real quick, guys. Round of which checks? Wisdom. Wisdom check, not wisdom save. 
So, uh, Matt, this is a skill check. Um, instead of going to your, or this is an ability check, rather. Instead of going to your uh, skills, you just ro roll the uh, uh, a raw d20. And, uh, and add your wisdom modifier, which that would be on the top row. It's uh, fourth from the right, or fifth from the right, or fifth from the left, pardon me. All right, yeah, Matt, uh, actually. It's plus two, so. And Irina, that was a D20 plus one, so you got an 18. And Carthos? 17. Carthos, 17. All right. All of you guys, uh, except for, well, Matt, that, that sounds just like you. Everybody else, you, you sit there and you uh, the more you hear this, you realize that it's not, it doesn't sound like an echo. It doesn't sound like a perfect impersonation. It sounds like something might be calling back. It's a sound alike of some variety. Like a mockingbird, but of voices. Dumbest idea in the world. Sh I but do it. let's maybe go towards it. I mean, we can go find another another one of these things. We gotta go in this one? Hey, y'all wanted to go into the barrel maze. This is the entrance this is to the, the barrel maze. maze. This is the reason why... Uh, this is the I challenge. Mean, this is the story. This is where the riches are. This is the legend. Stuff like this is why people die doing this, you know, just so you know. You know, people do stupid stuff like that and get themselves killed. And Eric in the back is just like, Eric, Eric, what, what, what? you're not, you're not, you're coming along. You're coming along. No, Eric. No, no guts, no glory. Eric's going in first. All right. If I'm going in, you're going in. This is your idea. This was your idea. Man up and get in there. We gotta finish Mitch. Let's go. <laughs> Shoving him in there. <laughs> Jesus Drunk man. first. The axe. Hook him up. As he as he shoves in, he's ah. you hear from down below, you hear, man up and get in there. <laughs> you, uh, you descend, you you descend down the steps. The steps yeah. are littered and literally crunch with fragments of bone well-worn down bone, bone that has been ground into almost dust in some places. Uh, the, the room almost. itself here is pitch black. If you want to proceed, you're going to have to have a light source. Yeah, I have a torch. I'll, I'll light. Yep. Okay. Hang on, let me avert my eyes. That's going to hurt. Ah, uh, yes. The the one with the dark vision is always like, you know, like, damn it, you, you, you stupid humans with your stupid light. Your stupid dark vision with your stupid dark vision. <laughs> Yeah. Just let just look as long as you light it behind me, everything will be fine. Cool. So that means you're going in the front. Sure. <laughs> well, Nothing could go wrong. As right you there. as you light the torch, here's what you see in the chamber. I was really worried it was actually the horned thing behind the photo. I was really worried that's what that was. Oh, uh, no, that's my mascot. So don't yep. worry about him. Don't 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 worry about. I'm not. I'm worrying about this. I think I've seen this before at Disneyland. Yeah, I pull the rope. <laughs> Don't, Don't pull, pull the rope. rope. Don't pull the rope. That looks janky. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yaks, well, Yaks just looks at you guys and shakes his head like, all right, this is what you want to do. Yaks, you don't come in. You ain't in here to judge us now. It's too late. Hey, Only the gods possible? can judge you at this point. Huh? What's beyond the hole? Uh, nothing. It's literally uh, like there's a couple of empty alcoves and uh, it's a brick wall yeah. in, that, in that shadow on the north side. Yeah. This is the chamber uh, that leads down. So we're able to walk around on that stone surrounding the hole? Yes, you can. You can walk around the, the, the zone surrounding the hole. Cool. Uh, 
I'm just gonna poke it and just kind of. I'm. I'm gonna. I am. I'm actually gonna tug on the rope a little bit. Was, yeah, maybe like poke it with the prongs of the of your of the trident or something like that. Not cut it, but yeah, I'll you know kind of test the the how well is it like anchored in. Um, I, I will tell you that it is old and rusty and looks like it has been there for a very very long time but as you tug on it it seems to hold pretty steady I'm pretty like heavy to... I uh, can probably go last uh, I'm gonna lay on my stomach and kind of bend over and see if I can see what's on the in, down the hole okay uh, the tough part is is that you know uh, or give me give me a perception check on that Give me a perception check on that. Uh, plus one. We'll get to that momentarily. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So there you look, you, you look down, and just you manage to angle the torch behind you so that it's not blowing out your vision as you're looking down. But you do manage to take take a look in, and you see a lot of darkness. Uh, but you look like it's probably about a 35, 40 foot drop from what you can tell but the rope does go all the way down and it's the the ground down there is again bones ground bones um and where uh are you closest to the entrance laying down looking around and yeah. how far are how far in are you leaning just enough like put getting my shoulders probably at the the opening just enough to like dip my head okay down because otherwise uh, i have to like do this with the angle the of the, with the angle of the light behind you i mean you could try dropping a torch down uh if you want but with the angle of the light behind you it's really tough to see anything that's like underneath it's pitch black yeah. down there there is no uh -huh. no other light source so you can see like from the light you can see like a shaft of light that shows uh a floor that is Covered in in bone, uh, bones and and dirt. I just like to kick a kick a skull right down into the hole to see how far down it goes and see what sound it makes and what you, if a the, comes the back. skull crunches with your with the impact of your foot, and you hear like a crunch and then a and then a it falls and after a, it, it falls into the darkness and you can after a moment you hear a. And it settles, and again, the, that 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 hush falls over the ground, uh, all around you. Mm. And after a moment, you hear another round of wisdom checks, please. <laughs> Mimicking everything. Irina, you you recognize the fact that that is not an actual sound that, or that is that is not a natural sound that you heard uh, that occurs in the same way as what what just happened. That is some that is the sound of something that actually mi uh, mimicking it. Ooh. Right, I think we're gonna have to go down here. So anybody knows what mimics? What, what has to mimic our every sound? So, well, one of the things it could be a mimic, literally. So, uh, we... out of character, quick question: um, Is the issue we're running into right now that we can't get a good angle of our light source? That's kind of yeah, what. Yeah, because okay. if I were to stick it, it would just. It just so happens I have a fishing pole and we can tie the torch and then I can slowly <laughs> lower the torch down courtesy of my fishing rod until we can get a better view of what's going on down there. 
Okay. Dark vision. Yeah. yeah, I'm down to try that. With a uh, or the dark vision, yeah. Yeah, you want to stick your head down there because sure. You probably yeah. Let's do that. Let's survive like it. I'll do it. Uh, all right. Hold on one second. So we're we're sending Carthos down as as the bait for whatever's down there. Whoa, just whoa, head. wait. Send just down. Head. <laughs> just his head. I just did it. It was fine. I just couldn't see anything. Yeah. So you guys take the torch and you tie it onto the fishing pole and you well, start lowering. Uh, oh, I think we're going to go. We're going to yeah, go the, the Carthos. Tiefling, the tiefling wanted to take oh. a peek first. Yeah. Before we, we before we MacGyver, give me uh, Brett. Give me a perception check, please. As you're actively looking, I think I see the insides of my eyelids. Oh no, that's not a one. That's that. That's a twelve. That's actually not too bad. But you don't. It, it looks yeah empty down there. It does not look friendly. And let me tell you, the smell is something awful. Because in addition to the smell of like rotting corpses and death, there's now uh, like uh, mustiness dust uh mold you know like it's 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 quite the bouquet coming up out of this place sorry the smell blinded me that's fair all right let's macgyver let's wait macgyver it is okay so i proceed to tie a good knot and start lowering the torch down okay. with the with my fishing pole all right uh Give me a fresh round of perception checks as you guys all look. Mold. All right. Carthos, 10. Oh, geez. All right. As, as you lower the torch down, for the briefest instant, Mold, you and, uh, and, and Sicarius both see something dart out of the light. Back into the shadow. We've got along the wall one. opposite of where you guys are standing, or you know, on the, on the side opposite from where you're standing and looking down. You can't quite get a glimpse of what it is, but it moved quickly and it was large. Mm. And by large, I mean like larger than a rat. It's not like a rat size. We're talking something that was probably uh, with a twenty-two. I would say that you you think that it could be like kobold or halfling sized somewhere in between there oh we can take that come on we can do this come on eric, eric you first let's go then i'll go if, if no one else is going to volunteer i will well, i mean I'll, I'm, I'm willing to go first i'm just worried because out of character, my dude weighs like over four hundred pounds. Well, you've already you've already got the the torch on the line. Yeah, Lo lower. I'll go down, and you okay. Well, and then I'll how, take it with me. Can only one person go down at a time on this thing, or can we uh, fit more, one of this, us? This rope looked real janky. So we probably I mean, want to. If, the first if two individuals could go down on this, it's probably Irene and Carthos. Everybody else is a little bigger. Yeah. That would be my suggestion. And that's fine with me. Okay. I'll go first. Uh, you come up right behind me. Okay. All right. Irina, I need an athletics check. Hey. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. So you start climbing down and you get 10 feet down you get 15 feet down you notice that the that the the rope starts turning as you're going down and you notice in the torchlight as you're climbing you stop for a split second and you could see writing on the wall behind you that was uh, that that that's on the side of the wall that that's directly underneath where you were. Um, and as you're looking at all this, all of a sudden the uh, the pulley starts spinning. It comes loose, 
and the rope and you fall and you jerk uh it, you you, you kind of it kind of gives suddenly and you start into free fall for a split second and the rope catches make a deck save five you fall 20 feet you take two six damage. Uh, Okay, so I suck at rolling. So you you actually managed to land and absorb most of the impact as you fall. You only take three points of damage. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Considering how 2d6 could knock one of us out right now. Yeah. yeah. You, you you land in a heap and a <clears throat> and you're knocked dizzy for a second, but you look up and in the hanging spinning torch light, you actually, you know, sent the torch spinning as you as you went past it. You look up at the wall. And in giant letters across the back wall, it says, can't get out. Oh, that's foreboding. Yeah. That would be bad, uh, yes. And as, and you start to stand, or I'm assuming you start to get up and you're looking at all that, right? Oh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me a perception check. Thirteen. Thirteen. You hear, hello, hello, coming Glaive. from, Glaive out, <laughs> coming from behind you. You turn and allow me one second. I'm going to get you guys on this janky ass map that I made. Get you on. As as people descend, I will add them to the proper layer, or add them to the map. Our token layer, and oh, I need a torch. Oh, do I have dynamic lighting turned on this or not? Mm, I don't think. No, oh, I don't think so. I do now. Explorer mode. Bingo. Aha. Oh yeah, and it's dark as hell right now because you are torch. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna put that right up here, and I'm going to dynamic lighting token emits bright light, twenty feet. Low light, 20 feet. Save that. And then layer, token layer. Hey, so you have yeah. this token above you. Or you have this torch hanging above you. And it, that writing is over here. On that, writing, the... that writing is, in fact, over here. Okay. Over on the uh, left wall. Okay. That That is correct. And let me just make sure I got that because that is now going to be there for all time, I might add. This is, uh, yeah, cannot get out, exclamation point, is what it says. Get out. So there's a sign on the wall that says, can't get out. And you're, you're saying that? To the, to, the, to the guys up top. Uh, all and right. You heard the sound behind you, right? Oh, yeah, and there was a thing behind yeah. me. That and by the way, that thing behind you sounded real close. Oh, okay. Well, like so, maybe don't. You, so, do, do you want a retcon yelling? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, yeah, because it, it sounded it sounded like it was probably uh, thirty right feet from you, maybe. Yeah, pretty close. Um, yeah, so you you're you're bathing in the light. Give me one. Uh, actually, hold on, because that's a. Yeah, as you turn and look, and as your eyes adjust to the darkness on the edge of the darkness, you can actually see a figure hiding through the doorway. Ooh. Ooh. And right now, 
you see a it's it's a warped gaunt figure its skin appears to be a patchwork of <coughs> of uh almost like a frankenstein's monster in a way but natural like some some of its fur some of its skin some of it appears to be almost like lizard scale it's hunched and it's wielding a club and it just looks and it's just looking at you i i, I don't, I don't want to hurt you a friend out of nowhere it emits the it, it it you see it and it looks at you and it emits the hello yeah. hello that's almost me. a per almost a perfect echo of hello. your voice hello that's me that's me and its eyes kind of light up with recognition as you say that and out of nowhere it emits a blood curdling shriek that sounds like death. That sounds like the last sound someone would ever make before they die. And it charges up. Oh, yeah. It charges at you. Uh, so let's roll, let's let's roll for some initiative. Let's do that. Initiative plus two. Um, oh yeah, let me pull up my. Uh, oh God. Seventeen. Well, I'm useless, guys. I can't click on my my token, so I'm gonna roll it, but it's not gonna associate it. I don't think. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you guys, yeah, you guys technically aren't on the map yet. Yeah. So right now, uh, I I will I have a different tracker built in here that I'm gonna use to track your guys' uh, combat. Let's see what two numbers up at Here we are. All right. Uh, let's run this. Okay, Irina, what was your? Oh, uh, um, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, so Irina got a seventeen. I mean, mold. What'd you get? Uh, I got a blazing five. Five. <laughs> got it. Uh, Carthos. Twelve. And what's your max HP, real quick? Eight. Uh, twelve. Eight, perfect. I need that. And then, um, Sicarius, what'd you get? 13. Or 15, you said? 13. 13. Got that. And what is your max HP? Nine. Nine. Copy that. All right. Carthos, Sicarius. And then let's roll for the bad guys. Irina, you have first action. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I would like. And you are, by the way, you are also currently only at one hit point. Oh. Because of the damage that you took when you fell. Oh, okay. Because I took three, and it said my thirteen, my hit points were oh, at 13. Oh, three. You took three. Why did I think you took 12? Oh, my okay. God. Okay. I was wondering. You are you are at 10. Forgive me. You are yeah, yeah, yeah. a barbarian with four hit points? That's so oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I still like the odds of a barbarian with only one or two hit points in a in a fight, guys. I mean, just having played berserkers for years. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. you weren't joking when you said this was a deadly game. Yeah. You know? Sorry, but but I didn't mean to make it that deadly. I promise. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, the 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 creature howls at you and 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 makes a charge, uh, uh, thinking that you might be easy pickings. Um, in which case, I am going to use my first rage. Um, cause he scared the crap out of me with that shriek. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I rage and all of a sudden my muscles get all crazy. Like, cause I normally mm -hmm. didn't, I wasn't already all crossfitted out, but now I'm suddenly yeah. turning into like super crossfit. Chick. Super, yeah. super crossfit. You're, you're only talking about crossfit now. Like that's yeah. the only yeah. thing that you talk about when you yeah. rage. Yeah. Is, yeah. Kettlebells. Bro, 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 you been to the box, bro? You seen them gains, yeah. bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can jump this high. I can jump this high. I can, how many pulls yeah. can you do, man? How many pulls uh, can you do? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This and is then, the way to run a barbarian from now on. Yeah. And then I'm gonna hold my action to like just impale 
It's because I don't want to get too far away from my light source and okay. just hold it to when they get. So you, uh, set, you basically set against a charge. All right. Yeah. Uh, what what is the range on your glaive? Does it give you extended reach or is it just regular? I reach? do believe it does be extended. Glaive shield. Okay. Glaive. Yeah, we give you ten feet. Uh, heavy reach. Yeah. Yeah. So cheap. All right. 10. So it comes out of the shadows like a bat out of hell, screaming bloody murder at you, literally screaming a death knell at you. It gets within ten feet, and it 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 uh, it goes right at you. Uh, roll your attack. Plus four. Sixteen. Sixteen hits. Roll your damage. Uh -huh. Oh, I oh I didn't mean to roll. Oh, boo! Three points, and I didn't put it on the roll twenty. Are they talking to each other yet? Three uh -huh. Okay. Now, now it is talking. Okay, cool. So, you impale it. <sighs> uh, I could have done so much more damage it. than that. That sucks. <laughs> you you sucks. impale it, and it goes wide eyed. As as the the glaive the blade of the glaive goes directly through him, and he kind of looks down, and then he looks up at you with bloody fury, okay. and starts to pull the glaive through himself as he tries to get to you and he's pulling himself closer and closer and rears back for a swing with one hand and he has this cruel looking claw that looks like the broken femur of something huge he rears back to swing at you with it oh oh no i'm so sorry okay And he cracks you across the face with it, snapping your head to the side. You take five damage. Oh, geez. And at that point, one on one, you think that all you really literally have to do is maybe twist the knife and this guy might be dead. But then you hear a chorus of death knells coming from down that hallway and the sounds of charging feet. Side note, I forgot to apply an additional two damage because of the rage on him. So the three was just a, a roll a one plus the two damage and then I add plus two for the rage. All right. Sorry. So here's sorry. I don't so think that makes a difference. Here's how that's here's how that's gonna work then. Uh you he, he pulls himself on. He cracks you across the head with a with a with a you spit blood out of your mouth and you turn and you just turn the glaive up and it literally turns his his insides just innards just turns them and inverts them and with a with a howl he <coughs> coughs up blood and and collapses <coughs> so i'm going to i'm going to rule that because we missed the damage right, the first fine. time around that you still that you still got hit that's fine but but yeah, uh, you fair. do. I will say. I will rule that you finished him off. Thank you. And at that point, as you stand over the corpse, that is when you're catching your breath and you you're like, you know, still just murder rage. That's when you hear the chorus of death knells from the hallway, and the sound of charging feet. I'll get down here, guys. Yo, you guys got to get down here right now. I need some help. I just killed a thing. Get down here right now. You estimate you might have about one round before they start coming in. Um, that is their actions. Sicarius, what would you like to do? Uh, well, I guess I'm going down. Coming down to save her. You going down? If I no. die, you don't get money. That's, that's my, that's, I'm protecting my investment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me an athletics check. Uh, athletics. Oh, there we go. Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. You uh, you manage to skillfully just kind of like zip right down that rope. You wind up coming down with some rope burn. It's like, oh, god damn it! Like, oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. But you you do manage to successfully navigate. Carthos, do you want to do you want to wait for him to get all the way down, or do you just dive on behind him like the fire pole? Yeah, I'm coming down. All right. So you come down. This is going to go badly for me, but I'm coming down. All right. You you dive down the rope behind him. Give me an athletics check. 
Yeah, you're just like, you're, you're, as uh, Sicarius holds it, hold, pulls the rope taut, you kind of slide down and almost just like, wee, zip, 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 all the way down. And uh, let me go on ahead and add you guys to the battle here. The battle is joined. A new player has entered the field. A new player. Player. Uh, Boy, if there was a roll to get a nat 20 on, that was a nice one. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, right. Me and my tiny life points cannot handle me falling down the road. <laughs> but with right. my minus one modifier. I also I, I make sure make it a point to yell up to mold, so help me God if you don't come down here. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you when I get out. <laughs> Send down, yes. you do you guys, you as you guys get down, do you want to clear clear the bottom of the rope? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna grab the I don't know, I'm gonna also grab the torch off so he can be free to climb safely. Okay. I'm gonna rule. I guess you that... guys spent my whole action doing that because I had something I was hoping to do to help. All right. Well, Arena's got the, the torch right now, and everybody else clears five feet. And uh all right, all right, big man, let's see what you got. Yeah. You're just like hold my beer. <laughs> So just sliding down the big thick leathery palm, just zzzz. yeah. You you can hear though. You can hear that, like an that, the way you do that. That tripod <laughs> at the top that that the rope is attached to. You can hear that like yeah. you can hear the groaning of the metal as this four hundred pound turtle just slides down this thing. But it holds surprisingly, shockingly, it holds. Where is Eric? He is not coming. Oh, dick. Excuse me, I have a song for this. Hold, hold on a moment. Uh, yeah, he failed his will save. He is not coming now. It's safe to assume Yax is gone too. He didn't even come in the. Yax doesn't. Yax doesn't. You yeah. didn't. You didn't pay Yax to go into the barrel maze. He does not. Yes. He's out. He, okay. Yeah. He's Frosty. outside. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um. Irina, you have uh, one round to prepare yourself. Or you, you have one last action to prepare yourself. Um, I want to toss the torch, because I can't have it in my hands and also use my glaive, to just in eh, that direction towards the doorway. Because it has 20 feet, 20 foot radius? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 20 foot radius, but then I also rule it does 20 feet of uh, dim light. Okay. Yeah. So just in this general, towards the doorway, so I can get as much. See him coming right. as far as. Yeah, just check to see where it lands. We'll actually do a, uh, we'll do a grenade check. Nope. I advantage. That was wrong. That was wrong. I don't know which one you usually take. How did you get a zero? How did I get a zero? <laughs> That's got mad skill. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did accidentally kick there. There we go. Single. Yeah, that was not great. Seven. All right. So you you toss it, and in your um in, in your haste to toss it, uh, it kind of lands up against the wall here, and a little cockeyed from further further back from where you wanted it. But you guys should now all have, uh, you know, the opportunity to see stuff. Uh, with and, that, and then I'm just going to move, move away from my green friend just to give him a little space. Okay. And, and then brace myself. Rowan. Where did that one go? Okay. All right. That that uh you guys all fast rope down and managed to get in just in time because as you go, two, three. Bam, you got one, two. Three. Oh no. 
Oh, oh, there's so many of them. Uh, all right. They, they come pouring through the entryway. They come pouring through the entryway. There's five of them. And they're all screaming that the different death knells, different uh, different uh, sc screams of of creatures that they have slain before. You can hear them echoing their last moments as they come howling with frothing teeth and and and, and uh, muscles taut with murder on their minds. Each of them wielding large uh, large bones, clubs, uh, metal poles, anything that they can find. Uh, these large blunt objects, and they're swinging them wildly as they all charge at you. Uh, let's go. We've got one for Irina, one for the turtle, one for the bard. Uh, Irina, you take your glaive and you manage to ding, pass it away. Like, oh, no, not today. Not today, son. And you manage to deflect it. No. Mold, however, uh, this, this, the creature comes, comes up on you and swings for your head. What is your AC? 17. Oh, and, and when you, are, you are surprised by the, the speed and the ferocity of the attack. And on top of that, you recognize too late that, he, that this thing knows to aim for soft spots. You, take, uh, you, 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 are, you are caught off guard as it cracks you in the face with its, uh, with its weapon. For a, uh, and it hits you hard for eight damage. All right. And Brett, what is your AC? Thirteen. You hit me. Yep, I did. I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> well, yep, I can tell I you right now that you actually lucked out. It it hits you solid in the gut for seven points of damage. Oh, Jesus Christ! Ooh, Ooh. we're gonna die. TPK. Well, that's it for the bad guys right now, though. So you guys now have a round of action. Sicarius, you are up next. Uh, well, I believe I have a dragon breath I would like to. Uh, oh, hell yeah. yeah. You're, you're a green dragonborn, right? Uh, yeah, I got I to gotta hit him hard and hit him fast. So. Hit him all. <laughs> All right. Now, how do I? How do I? You. You are green. That is poison. Fifteen foot cone. Constitution save. You don't have to roll anything. I have to roll it. Okay. So yeah. because now I'm I'm you're forcing my guys to make a save. So breath. Wait, which which are you? The green guy, yellow guy, or orange guy? I'm the orange guy. He's uh, Sicarius is up here. Oh. Oh, look. Ooh, right look at that fancy little graphic. Um, breath. There we go. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we weren't gonna. We're not. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. We're not in the way. <laughs> Holy shit! You, you you positioned yourself perfectly, and you can hit all of them. Yeah, because you could have hit the other guys if it were, they were any cl any closer. All right. What is the saving throw for your um, breath weapon? I think for I think for like level one, it's actually I have your character sheet up on my page anyway. Um. 2d6 dc 11. all right so go on ahead and roll 2d6 let's see what the damage is nine points of damage okay That's nice and half damage on a successful save okay uh, all right let's start this one that's a fail. Two, that's a fail. That's a success. That's a success. That's a fail. You literally, uh, you unleash breath upon them and your poison, your, your cloud of poison breath, as they're screaming, the, the screams of, of pain and agony, the death knells that they are unleashing, literally uh, catch in their throats as they are engulfed in a cloud of poison gas that they immediately start trembling, trembling and falling in over themselves. This one melts away completely. This one does, does the same collapsing in a coughing fit and then going still. That one as well. 
the other two uh, bear, are, are, are holding their throats, barely able to breathe. And then four right. damage and four damage. All right. Uh, Arthos, it is your turn. Well, what I was going to do, I am not going to do now. I'm going to cast a little spell. What are you going to cast? Cure wounds. Smart man. On me. I was planning to cast it on the barbarian, but I think I need it. Yep. All right, you get five back. Roll so you're fucking... right. Sorry, roll a damn two on that. Happens. Happens to the best of us. All right, so you are you, you managed to. Uh, do you also want to take your? Uh, oh wait, you can't do that. Never mind. Uh, I was going to say, do you want to withdraw? But that's actually a standard action. Is really, really that's good. a standard action? But what I do want to do that is a bonus action. Mm-hmm. Um, one second. Let me make sure I have all the information on this right. Bardic inspiration. This creature within sixty feet can hear me gains an inspiration die. Woo! Um. All right. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm going to give it to Irina. Well, that was a lot of help. <laughs> but hey, it's a point. Well, no, she would roll the... Uh, do you I, roll oh, the she roll I, roll, I roll a d6. When she I gets to spend the d d6 on whatever she wants. It's her inspiration. Okay. Well, yeah. I have given it... I have gifted it to you. Thank you. All right. Mulled, uh, Mul, it is your turn. So, seeing that, you know, um, our good storyteller took a pretty powerful shot, I'll step up. And as I'm stepping, I'm clutching the trident with two hands because it's a versatile weapon. But I'm stabbing mm -hmm. it straight down um, at the, whatever this creature is that, that attacked. Okay. Us. Roll it, baby. Um, how come it's not highlighting now? There it is. Get him. I don't know if a 10 will hit or not, though. Ah, unfortunately, even though it is hacking, it still manages to, men to, to deflect the blow and menace you away with its, with its blade. Or with its, um, right. yeah. Uh, Irina. So rage is still rolling because I took damage. So I'm gonna go after this guy in front of me. Mm -hmm. Get him. Thirteen. Mm. He just barely manages to avoid the attack. Who? <sighs> oh. All right. Um, you can add bardic inspiration to that. Oh, oh sure. add bard, yeah, add yeah, yeah, yeah. Add, add, adding bardic. So thirteen plus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my bard. Oh, nope. Go down. Not plus. Plus nothing. Plus four. So seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, yeah. He he at first deflects, but uh, he he thinks he he's deflected the shot, but you faint. You faint like you're gonna stab one way, and you swing your glaive over your head, and you literally behead him with the with with the spin. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Did you? Oh, did you roll your damage? I, I, mean, I didn't. Gonna, roll your damage. Uh, I mean, unless you completely screw it up. Oh. Uh, he's the coach. Uh, coach yeah. said. Eight pl and then plus another two for ten. Yeah. Oh. To totally. Yeah. Totally, <laughs> completely <laughs> effing dead. Yes. All right. Um. The last one uh, sees the turtle coming at him, and uh, considering the turtle just attacked him, he is going to try and retort. A nineteen hits. Yep. 
Seven points of damage. All right, I fall to the ground unconscious. No. And dying. And it it, it pounces upon you, uh, trying to rend at at whatever it can, but it can't seem to pierce your it, it can't pierce your shell at the moment. <clears throat> but the good news is, is Sicarius, it's your turn. Well, I'm going to use a regular uh, melee attack. So okay. The rope. So I'm assuming you're actually stepping into melee range, like so. <clears throat> All right, and let's go on ahead and see your attack here. You should go to your actions tab, and you could take your uh, short sword and just roll the uh, d20 plus four. Uh, let's see. What one d20 plus four? 1d20 plus 4. That'll do. God damn. Yeah. All right. Roll your damage. Yeah. Uh, so d6 plus 2. Nice. Yep. You, uh, as as it is preoccupied with trying to kill, no, to, 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 to finish off your turtle companion, Actually, you know what? I'm going to borrow this from the great Mr. Mercer. Uh, Where'd he go? Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you on my <laughs> finger. I turned off the wrong <laughs> uh, I'm going to put, I'm, I'm, I'm going to borrow from the great Mr. Mercer here. And Matt, tell me how you finish him off. How do you want to do this? <laughs> Describe how it happens. All right. Well, uh, now that I'm up to close in melee range, I have the ability to see exactly what this creature is. And uh, I position myself behind him, take my my sword. It's a sword, right? I don't have a dagger. Yeah, you have two short swords. Yeah. Yeah, two short. Yeah. I take both my short swords behind him and I decapitate him from behind. Nice. Nice. All right. So this poor creature, by the way, I'm actually displaying him in the tabletop for you guys to examine. That is what they look like. Oh, uh, you, you get up, you get up behind him as he's, as he's trying to work over poor, uh, um, molds unconscious form. And you, with a flourish, you spin your blades and then shunk, you count Dooku him from behind. Nice. And the head just thump, 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 thump. And now the, the corpse, lands you know prone on top of molt and just starts gushing blood all over his face sorry molt mm, so good i'm i'm not yep. cold He's, he doesn't yep. care he's done <laughs> what he did to yep. mold. <laughs> so you uh you have defeated the the first wave of creatures yeah. the silent puddles you have an unconscious fall, uh, fallen ally in front of you. Um, I'll run over to him and bust out my healer's kit and start stabilizing him. I'm two okay. steps ahead of you. I've got another cast of cure wounds. Oh, do do you want to use that or spend it? Spent or is it a cantrip? No, it's a first level spell. I should probably let you stabilize him. Actually, yeah, yeah. Let me at least. Yeah, I'll let you do it. Yeah, I mean he'll. It's probably yeah. At least, at least he won't be dying. He'll have like one hit point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's get a check on that. Uh, you just roll the healer, healer's kit check to stabilize. Medicine. Yeah. The sun. Fourteen, good enough. Sweet. Uh, you, you stabilized him and managed to get him back to, to. Uh, I'm going to say that you actually managed to to bind his wounds and get him back to one hit point, and uh, and he slowly comes back into consciousness. Oh lord, <laughs> not looking too good there, buddy. Mm, I'm not <laughs> used to things swinging more <laughs> gator than most. Mm. Hey, can you know you can compress on? Yeah, I've got 
a trick next time to use. Use it. And he starts patting down his nets like he's, because he's got his bell rung pretty hard. So he's, you know, he's like, it's here somewhere. And he pulls out a side net, like a smaller net from his, you know, weave of nets. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Awesome. As you get back on your feet and you're unsteady, uh, give me a round of perception checks. Hmm. All right. Don't worry, Mold. I avenged you. No, you did real good. Us reptiles got to stick together. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I was the walking chum bucket and not them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. I just sent uh, I, Matt Brett. I just sent you guys notes in Roll Twenty uh, about what you guys <clears> see. I'm adding it to the feed here, so folks in the in in folks watching can check out what I said right over in y'all. Your thing is still open, Greg. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my! Which which thing is still open? If you're whispering, oh, the, the, yeah, we can all see. Oh. Oh, because you guys are watching the feed. Well, that's fine. Brett, uh, Brett, Matt, you guys can see that. I'm, I I just wanted to show everybody else that's actually watching at home what I said. But you guys can yeah, play I, out what Yeah, I covered it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, suspect, uh, I suspect Eric is running away, leaving us. He's been up top this whole time. He didn't even come down the damn rope. That's that's not Eric. Oh yeah. No, Brett, you you do you do hear fleeing foot footsteps from above, but you hear something else. Yeah, as well. Uh, that's Eric's not what I'm worried about. What you guys don't hear that? About? I'll pick I'll pick up the torch and start. Big heavy footsteps. That's what I'm worried about. You guys don't hear that? I hear it. No. Yes, you. Yeah, uh, Matt, you do hear it. I hear nothing. I mean, all, um, it molds like Archer right now, just like. Yeah, I'll pick up the torch. Is danger zone. But they're they're getting further away. They're it's it's running away. The... No, it's just down the hall. It's distant. That doesn't mean it's not coming. It's all right. We can take them. And I'll be careful I'll... with that torch. Creatures down here will gravitate to that light the same way you were worried they'd come to the sound of me. Well, I got to be able to see them. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, Carthos, give me a wisdom save real quick. Yeah, uh, what I what I just whispered to you is what you're realizing, guys. We're not up to this. If we stay down here, we will die. Cool. Oh, should I mean, there's more of these places where we can find stuff and sell. So I'm I'm that, I'm down. To that might be it. Might be smarter to go grave digging, but we want out of here. Whatever is coming, we can't take. Cool. Okay. I trust you. Let's get out. I mean. We should probably take a rest so this guy can recoup a little bit. All right. Let's do it on the surface. Let's get a round of athletics checks. I hope this goes as well as last time. Oh, fuck. 
Okay. Point. So, uh, Irina, you you just thump, 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 no problem for you this time. Uh, Molt, you do manage to pull yourself up slowly but surely. Uh, it, it's it, it's slow going, but you do manage to manage to, to scale the thirty five feet up the rope and successfully get out. Um, Carthos, it it's it takes you a while. It's almost embarrassing that it takes you a while, but you do finally manage to emerge. And Matt, it almost takes you just as long. I think all told, it takes you guys about like 20, 25 minutes to get up and out of here. Um, matter of fact. Okay, cool. Uh, you're back up at the top. As long as we were not pursued. Uh, no, you were not exit pursued by bear. Or any other <laughs> large item or creature. See what bear uh, I think we could take. It's you what you come, you you come out and come up the stairs and out of out of the barrow and you look and Yax is just like, what what happened? Nothing. What? No, but Nothing. your 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 guy just. I tried to get him to stop, but like, no, he's. Gone. He just ran into the swamp. Yeah, he's gonna. Well, he right raise around to him later. He's dead. Yeah. He 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 ran he, he ran back the way we came, and he didn't even wait. He dead. He's not a <laughs> small. <laughs> he 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 <laughs> and he he looks and he sees. First off, he comes up and he he sees mold and and mold is still covered in mongrel man blood. That's not all his. Attention. You don't want to attract any more attention. I think it's best we go home. Does anybody have like a rag or something real quick? We can use some water and wipe him down. Don't you have like spells or something that can do that? I can just lay in the water Thank for you. a moment. I forget how useful prestidigitation is. Yeah. Or in this case, thaumaturgy. <laughs> it, it cleans you up and you're, you gives you a fresh coat of turtle wax. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know where it comes from. Well, that uh, came right. from the Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Yeah. Wax on. I mean, we might need to go back to town so he can rest because he's no, no good to us with... Well, we want to we do it. Yeah, we're going back to town anyway. Maybe we go yeah. back and we have, we lost the guy who's who who needs us for the the what am I thinking? That's um, his problem. Bragging the bragging rights. So That's like his our, our contract with him is done. So okay, I have a strong one for him. Yeah, no, let's let's go maybe find. Oh, we have him, Sir Robin. Is Robin. Well, we're we're com we're coming up on on our time here for tonight, guys. Yep. So, y Yax is like, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm going back. You can either come with me or you can stay here and get eaten. I don't care. Oh, let's get go. me the hell out of here. All right. So you guys start going back. Uh, it is not long before you uh come uh you you could see clearly the tracks of boot prints just booking it into the swamp um dead man uh round of perception checks please Nice. Sicarius, you hear a head off to the side, off to the off in the woods, or off off in a thicker part of the uh of the, the swamp and the undergrowth. You hear uh a howl uh howling. You hear howling, and it's a number of howls. And you recognize or uh you know, actually, you, you guys can all hear it after a second. Sicarius, you hear it first. 
Um, and none of you guys are nature, but you know enough about this to recognize that that's the sound of a wolf pack that's made a kill. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. Oh no. <laughs> you estimate somewhere between uh, six and 10. Not the direction we want to go. <laughs> so stay on the path and stick together. Yeah. Also, well, well, just as a precaution, come here. We should stay quiet as not to draw attention to ourselves. Can I approach? Yep. Oh, he hits you with uh, Cure Light Wounds for nine points. All right, so I'd be at or 10. Nice. You proceed carefully, cautiously, and it's it's you know actually kind of early afternoon, about you know three in the afternoon by the time you guys get back there, about three three thirty, but you do manage to make it back to town, uh, and it uh, securely you know without being attacked or intercepted by anything. And uh, Bolo is standing out on the porch of the tavern, smoking on a pipe. And he sees you coming in and he's like, well, didn't think I'd ever see you again. We weren't sure we'd see you either. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Who said I was disappointed? First round's on me. Come on in. Yes. All right. And with that, with you returning safely to town, we end our adventure. Yay. Hey, great job, everybody. We lived. We almost lost mold, but we lived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, I, I will tell you, uh, you know, out of game, now that now that we've we've ended the session, ye yelling down into the barrel maze, I rolled a random encounter because of that. So that was... Uh, nice. Yeah, that was that I, I that was that was like a, oh you did something to draw attention to yourself here and then it was like oh <laughs> half a dozen monsters awesome, awesome. So, yeah yeah but this is a this is a very very reactive uh very reactive environment so yeah you got you guys got your first taste so I hope you had fun I had I had fun mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for playing tonight. Thank you for watching, whether you're watching this now with us live. I know that we've got a few people watching us here, and I appreciate you guys hanging out. Thank you so much. Or if you are, um, uh, or if you're watching this archived on YouTube later on, do me a favor. I would love to run a scenario like this for you. So please check us out. Uh, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. I should have had this all prepped to go, but I was not smart. Um, but. Uh, Oh, Boom, I just put it in the chat, but uh, come and check us out. Join me in the barrel maze. I would love to run uh, run your own uh, exploration. Hopefully you don't do the same thing where you're yelling and drawing attention to yourselves as some of our adventurers did here today. Uh, Maybe you'll maybe you'll get beyond the first room. I, I tell you, they got one, but you know, progress has been made. You've explored one out of three hundred plus so far. So congratulations! Yeah, yeah. You are the first. You 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 have gone the furthest out of all groups. Oh lord! My, my, my intrepid adventurers of legend. So, yep. Thanks, y'all. Have a great night. Uh, I'm gonna put all my social stuff and all and everything else to come and uh, and follow me and and join us down in the bear maze in the chat in the descriptions and everything else. But in the meantime, have a great night. Stay safe, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.